Good evening, Internet. Welcome back to another night of Strange and Scary Games. Uh, I just realized that I did not pick up my controller off the floor. So I'm going to cut to me have my controller. All right, take two. Good evening, Internet. Welcome back to another night of Strange and Scary Games. Tonight we've got Paranormal Sight, the, se uh, the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. Yeah, that's right. Um, we've been going through it last week or last recording session. We got an ending for um, Michio's Grudge. Uh, I'm hoping that we're nearing the end since uh, according to how long to beat, we should be almost done with it. Uh, hopefully I'll finish it up in this video or the next video and then we can go from there. Um, this is still green, which worries me. I thought that we were done with this one. Let's go through... Yeah, let's start with Manhunt. Having learned the location of Nijima's hideout from Michio, Satsumi and Aria request backup from HQ for Nijima's arrest as their Manhunt picks up speed. From HQ to all bureaus. Officers have discovered the, reven the residence of parole defender uh, Fumachika Nijima, currently wanted under suspicion of criminal threat. Suspect escaped his residence prior to officer's arrival and is now at large in Sumida City. Suspect is thought to be fleeing on foot. All bureaus are instructed to pursue, ensuring that he does not take refuge indoors. Furthermore, suspect is believed to possess a weapon capable of causing large-scale casualties. All officers are instructed to exercise extreme caution in their pursuit, remaining vigilant for signs of explosives and poison gas. Former Yasuda Gardens. Sorry, boss. I tracked down Nijima's safe house, but he log he legged it just before he got there. Not your fault. We should have known he'd be on the lookout for us. We've got officers all over town. It's only a matter of time before we bag him. The rest of the town's crawling with police, but there's practically no one here. We've been running ourselves ragged all day. It's nice to finally stop and catch our breath. Oh, I changed my shirt, boss. No need for a BO check. The hell? Why would I be trying to sniff your pit stink? Wait, is that not what you were doing? Don't know where you got that idea, but you can put it right back where it came from. I'll get you in the mood for a good whiff someday, boss. I'll stake my career on it. Hell no. Not even for your career. Huh? You sure are eyeing me up, boss. Don't tell me. You've got a thing for me? No, no, nothing like that. Sorry, I shouldn't stare. So, boss, what are we doing here anyway? I figured Nijima might show up. Call it a hunch, but he used this place as a hideout 20 years ago. Fair enough, but will he even remember it after so long? Remember that mugshot of Nejima we circulated? I think it was from when he got out on parole, but except for a few wrinkles, he looked just like he did 20 years ago. Yeah, no idea how he kept up that weight on a prison diet. That's a stroke of luck though, isn't it? It means he'll be easy to spot. See, there's something bothering me about that. We've got every officer in the area looking for him, but no one's seen a damn thing. Which makes me wonder, what if we're looking for the wrong face? You mean he slimmed down? But it's only been half a year since he made parole. Could he really have lost that much weight in just six months? Well, he must look different enough that no one recognized him when he started working at Koma Gata High. Good point, but that means the photo we've got is useless. I know we didn't see anyone when we looked around before, but maybe we should check again. Don't bother. It's been a f it's only been a few minutes. Let's take a second to sit and think. Aye, aye, boss. Break time it is. Huh? Hey, boss. Hmm. I think I hear something coming from those bushes over there. You sure it ain't the wind? Hello? Is anybody there? Well, I'll be damned. Hey, you. Let me ask you something. And how can I help you two fine gents? Huh? Do I know you? I could swear I've seen you somewhere before. 
Brady ain't gonna charm anyone with that old, tired old line, sir. Not even this old timer. Playing hard to get, eh? My mistake. Anyway, what's your business here? Just enjoying a moment to myself since I've got the day off. I like it here. It's peaceful. We're looking for someone. Mind if we ask you some questions? Sounds like a m lucky man, sir, to have a strapping gent like yourself after him. This one's business, not pleasure. I've dedicated my life to putting this guy behind bars. You can say that again. Boss put in so many hours, even his wife and kid left him. Enough, Ario. You'll set him off. Sorry to hear that, sir, but if you if you glared at them like that all day, I can't say I blame them. <laughs> oh, that's it. The guy I'm after used to laugh just like that. You sure you haven't seen him? Oh, no, sir. Don't know anyone like that, sir. But with a laugh like that, he must be a bad to the bone. He's a nasty piece of work, all right. But maybe he can still do the right thing. You'd like to think so, eh? Ariel, call for backup. Huh? You mean, that's him? Crap, he's running away. Wait! I'll go after him. You get back up. Okay, I'm on it. From HQ to all bureaus. Suspect has been sighted in the former Yasuda Gardens and is fleeing towards Komagata Bridge. Ariel, go the long way around. We'll trap him on the bridge. Got it! Give it up, Nijima. You're surrounded. There's no way out. Hey now, you're really gonna pull that thing uh, on poor old me? When did the boys in blue get so trigger-happy around unarmed civilians? Unarmed, my ass. We know that curse you, you're packing... We know what the curse you're packing is capable of. But we also know it can't do shit in daylight, so give it up and come quietly. Can't do shit in daylight, eh? What do you think I am, some third-rate amateur? I'm a goddamn black magician. No way. Can black magic really do that? Like hell can. He's pulling that out of his ass. Black magic is from the West, and these curses are Japanese. They don't have anything to do with each other. Besides, if he could use curses while the sun was up, he wouldn't have given us uh, till dusk. Ooh. Nice of you to take me at my word on that. Now that EY is out of the picture, I'm shit out of options. Good to know. Sounds like it won't take much to get you to give up. Careful now. I might just be desperate enough to try something. And the kid over there might just be des uh, and the kid over there might just be desperate enough to shoot. Bit of a wild card, huh? Folks are starting to gather. That's no surprise given the scene we're causing. But if Nejima's packing explosives, he won't need a curse to cause a bloodbath. These idiots need to get out of here, but they won't listen. Why do rubberneckers always have balls of steel? Nothing over there. Nothing over there. Damn, his hands are starting to shake. A veteran investigator accumulate 10 hours of playtime. Being face to face with Nejima must be getting to him. I have every confidence he won't, but God, I hope he doesn't crack under the pressure and fire. Ariel, if he makes any funny moves, shoot him. Leave it to me, boss. I'll get him right between the eyes. Whoa, whoa, easy there, hotshot. I don't know if you're serious, but think about what you're saying here. If I really am unarmed, you'll be all over the news faster than you can say excessive force. My boss will take the fall, so that'll be that's fine by me. You're shitting me. This guy's a basket case. And a damn good officer. Fuck me, you've got spirit, kid, I'll give you that. Just give yourself up and this'll all be over. Hey boss, can I shoot already? My arms are getting tired over here. What? Knock yourself out. Whoa, hold up. The hell is wrong with you? You really gonna shoot a guy just because your arms are tired? Fuck, you look like you're really going to do it. You're out of your goddamn minds, both of you. Hear that, Ario? Let's hold off a little longer. Aye, aye, boss. Fuck me, the hell are you teaching that kid? He's natural. Birds of a feather. Don't take your eyes off this guy for a second, Ario. Got it. Nijima looks nothing at all like I remember him. 
did he really starve himself skinny just for this? Is he that hell-bent on revenge? If you want to talk, I'll talk, but first you gotta put that thing away. I can't think straight with a gun in my face. Not a chance. If you've got something to say, then say it. Your buddy's hands are shaking. If he squeezes the trigger a bit too hard, I'm done for. Makes things more exciting, don't you think? You two have lost your fucking minds. That massacre you told me about on the phone, did you mean it? Every word, don't you worry. Soon you'll have the case of a lifetime. Oh yeah? And how are you gonna pull it off? Like I'm gonna tell you, dumbass. But I'll give you one thing for free. I never had to wait till sundown. I just wanted to make sure you'd really hate me for this. Pretty sure I hate you plenty already. That ain't shit. I need more hatred out of you. More. 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 Needy son of a bitch, ain't you? Oh, I'm not done. Just wait till you see what I've got in store for you, for what you really care about. You should be quaking your fucking boots. That's not gonna happen. She's got enough uh, to worry about without your sor sorry ass getting in her hair. Heh, <laughs> now that's more like it. There's the face I wanted to see. Yeah, yeah, that's the stuff. I'm a man of my word, as you're about to find out. You have the curse stone for the one-sided reed. Of course I do. Take a look. That's it, all right. Whoops, better put it somewhere safe. Wouldn't want something hap to happen to it. How do you find out about the curse stones? They don't have anything to do with black magic. Someone else turned you onto them, didn't they? That puffed-up teacher, Ishi, couldn't shut up about him. He's desperate for a chance to flaunt his smarts. All I had to do was act impressed. That still doesn't explain how you learned so much so fast. Curses and black magic ain't as different as you seem to think. As far as I'm concerned, they're just two ways of harnessing paranormal powers. You're sure there isn't more to it? All that matters is whether that power is the real deal. And this curse is very real, as you well know. Joke's on you, Nijma. Don't you know the one-sided reed is a fake dropped in with the rest? Oh, give it a rest. I've tested it myself. Use that thing on people? Son of a bitch. When something this special falls into your lap, you gotta take it for a spin. I'm just good at covering my tracks. Good enough not to get caught, at least. Let me guess, you're back to your old tricks, attacking schoolgirls in the middle of the night. Ah, so you know about that, huh? One of the brats put up a fight. Bought enough time for the other one to get away, so I went ahead and called it quits. Sounds like your curse is a real pain to set off. Nah, I had that sorted way beforehand, but she pulled some kind of spirit bullshit on me. I would have gotten the little bitch eventually, I just didn't have the time. Way beforehand, huh? Interesting. If you think puzzling out my curse is going to help, don't bother. Why not? Because you won't be able to do shit about it either way. I'll let you in on a secret. I could fuck up a good few hundred people right now if I wanted to. A few hundred? Yeah, now you're getting it. I could kill any one of them at any time. Then I guess we've got ourselves a situation. You're telling me your curse can kill people you can't even see. Seems a bit unfair. If you really can't do that, why do you even bother show up, showing up in person last night? I wanted to make sure the curse worked, and I figured I'd need to clean up after. You've seriously got your curse locked onto several hundred people? That's one hell of a curse stone you're packing. These things sure ain't made equal. And of course you got the nasty one, of all the shitty luck. <laughs> I'm told I pulled a good one. Told? By who? Whoops, I've said too much. <laughs> I knew it. Someone fed you all this info. I don't know what you're talking about. I knew it. Someone fed you all this info. I don't know what you're talking about. Alright, so we can't do anything with that for now. About black magic. What's it been, Nejima? 20 years you've been studying black magic? And now you're just giving it all up for Eastern curses? I didn't have you down for a cheater. Hey now, black magic screwed me over first. Can't blame a man for going with the girl who can meet his needs. Screwed you over how? Because your resurrection ritual didn't work? That was the real point of the murders, wasn't it? Must have been rough, putting in all that work for no payoff. Imagine my surprise when I finally found out what you were really after. 
So now you're trying again with the right of resurrection, taking the chance to spin my eye while you do it. Tell me, Nejma. Who is it you want to re resurrect so damn bad? Who is it you've spent 20 years chasing? It's the mother of that baby, ain't it? You had a partner. And though you never put a ring on her, the two of you had a kid. But then she died. Maybe she got sick. Maybe she got into an accident. But either way, she left you and the kid all alone in the world. Tell me I'm wrong, Nejma. It's her you're trying to bring back, isn't it? I've seen for myself just how many folks are pinning their hopes on this rite of resurrection. And I can tell you this, it ain't natural, and it ain't gonna lead to anything good. So, if all you ever needed was someone to help you deal with the pain, then... <laughs> God, you're so fucking stupid. Huh? Is that really what you think? That's hilarious. You don't know a goddamn thing. What? Damn it. For a second there, I really thought you were going to talk him down, boss. Listen up, chump. I'll tell you what really happened 20 years ago. What really happened? You got half of it right. I did have a loving girl back once, sweet as could be. She knows what she went by, though I couldn't tell you if that was her real name. Don't know where she came from either. She traveled, I think. Might have been an angel for all I know. She sure seemed like one to me. But then she got sick, and just like that, she was gone. My guess is that it was pollution, but I never knew for sure. Couldn't afford a decent doctor. My life, my life after that was living hell. Until I found this grimoire in an old bookstore. A grimoire, huh? It told, of it told of a resurrection ritual, black magic that could bring Shino back. So I was right. Not exactly. See, who said the ritual didn't work? You said it yourself. Black magic screwed you over. Oh, it screwed me all right. But it worked just fine. What's that supposed to mean? See, the ritual doesn't bring the person back as they were when they died. It's more like reincarnation. Rebirth. Rebirth? Wait. Oh no. Oh hell no. You mean, that baby. Damn right. The resurrection ritual brought Chino back to me as a fucking baby. You've got to be kidding me. You're telling me that wasn't her kid. That was her, in the flesh. The hell I am. That little brat was not my Chino. Her mind was gone. She was totally helpless. She didn't even know who I was. Her warm arms, her gentle voice, gone, gone, gone. There wasn't a damn thing left of her. What the hell did you expect? She was a baby. If you'd really cared about her, you would have grown some balls and acted like a father. Fuck that. I snatched sacrifices off the street for her, chopped them to pieces for her, and that's what I get? A screaming little bundle of shit and piss? That wasn't my Shino. Give me back her softness. Give me back her warmth. Give her back to me. So you just left the baby to die? You knew you were scum, but you really are the lowest of the low. Look me in the eye and tell me that if your wife turned into a baby, you'd love her just the same. How could I do that when I couldn't even be sure it was really her? Yeah, yeah, I get it. I get that you're human garbage who doesn't care about anyone but himself. So now you're going after the right of resur- right of- So now you're going after the right of resurrection in the hopes that you'll get luckier this time. Luck doesn't come into it. The right really works. Here's proof. And what happens if you get the same results if your Shino comes back as a baby again? Ugh. Shut up. Don't you put that lie in my head. It'll work this time. It has to. Fumichika first began believing in miracles when he was voluntarily enlisted in World War II as a teenager and was the only pe uh, prisoner of war in his unit to survive. By the time he, the war ended and he was freed, he had learned some English and gained considerable weight from the food he was given in captivity. Upon returning to Japan, Fumichika found that the area in which his parents' house was located in Tokyo had been burned to the ground and his entire, entire family wiped out in the disaster. Starting over from nothing, he worked hard and eventually opened a small general store near the Sumida River. Though it was not a thriving business, it was enough to put food on the table. 
example, Fumichiko was inspired by the new cultural trends flooding into the city as Tokyo was rebuilt from the ashes. He was especially fond of books and enjoyed visiting antique bookstores in Kanda to search for rare foreign books in his free time. Of all books, however, it was those on the paranormal and the occult that caught his eye, as he was already open to the existence of such things due to his miraculous return from the war. What was initially a passing interest gradually became a deep fascination with Western black magic as he gathered more information on the subject. Still single after 30, Fumichika tried performing a black magic ritual to summon a partner. Soon after, he met a woman who called herself Shino, though her real name remains unknown. Shino had left her hometown in the countryside, where she had no family to w or work to support her, and somehow made it to Tokyo while earning a meager daily wage. When she met Fumichika, she was haggard and on the verge of starvation. Fumichika, who felt a connection with Shino due to the ritual, decided to take her into his home and let her live there, both of them having lived alone for most of their lives. The two turned out to be a perfect match. Shino gradually recovered, but still was not strong enough to work. Fumichiko was by no means a skilled businessman, and their lives were far from financially secure. But Chino, who had experienced wartime Japan, was simply content to have food on the table and eat every day. The two spent their days together, poor but happy to be by each other's sides. Several years later, Chino's condition took a severe turn for the worst. The local doctor could offer them no help, and without enough money to take Chino to a major hospital, Fumichiko resorted to using black magic to heal her. However, it was, no, it was of no use, and she passed away at their home. Her final words were, I'm sorry, I must go first. I'll leave the rest to you. Fumichiko plunged into intense despair. He drank and ate everything he could to distract himself, which caused him to rapidly gain weight. After a while, when he was finally able to walk around town once more, he found himself drawn to an antique bookstore, within which he found a grimoire he had never laid eyes on before. The grimoire contained detailed instructions on how to perform a resurrection through black magic. The right, uh... The right required the dismemberment and sacrifice of a young woman, but this great cost only served to convince Fumichika that this would be the spell that would finally work. He embraced the grimoire and let its depictions of black magic consume his heart more than ever before. Fumichika then found a destitute woman in town who was on the verge of collapse, brought her to a basement warehouse, and performed the ritual sacrifice. However, it had no effect. Thinking that his own hesitation had got in the way, he was swift to perform the ritual again, but it still proved fruitless. He repeated this process four times in total. Each time, he dismembered the body into small pieces and dumped them into the filthy Sumido River, where they were never found. While cleaning up after his fourth kill, a disappointed Fumichika noticed an emaciated baby nearby. Could it have been Shino? Huh. Huh. Fuck. Doesn't matter. I'm through with black magic. Is that why you gave your grimoire to EY? I figured he could use it. I put a lot of work into getting him uh, into getting him to believe that sort of stuff. Fine then. Keep your mouth shut. But I do know one thing. All that about being able to use your curse during the day, it's bullshit. It's just a bluff. Oh, is is that what you think? Your back's to the wall and you still haven't used your curse. If you really could pull the plug at any time, you'd have done it by now. <laughs> Now there's the Satsumi that I know. Fine, I admit it. It's exactly like you said. If I could have used my curse, I would have. So I did. Huh? There should be a few new corpses around the city right about now. You sure you should be pointing guns at me when people are dying across the city? What? When did you... Hey, Ario. Get someone to check that out. Just don't take your eyes off Nejima. Aye, boss. Hey, I need someone over here. Yeah, that's right. Get to earning that paycheck. If you don't use, uh, if you don't see them, uh, if you don't see them soon, there'll be plenty more on the way. However, however, will you get out of this mess? The longer you keep me here, the more people die. That's blood on your hands. Bullshit! You're bluffing. Think what you like. You'll see soon enough. Alrighty then. Huh? I'll slit your throat, you little shit. Huh? What? What? Stay back. I'll shoot. Wait, stop. Don't actually shoot, you idiot. See you around, dumb fucks. Shit, he jumped. Damn it. After him. Don't let him get away. From HQ to all bureaus. Suspect evaded officers at Komagata Bridge and fled, and currently remains at large. 
The time at which he threatened to carry out his attack is approaching. In response, we will call in reinforcements and widen the search perimeter beyond the immediate Sumida River area. Boss. Ah, boss. Boss, I'm sorry, it's all my fault. If only I hadn't lost my nerve and opened fire. Enough. I told you already. It's on me. I should have told you to lower your weapon. Thinking that chasing him to the river would corner him was also a miscalculation. Sure, it's possible that right now, he's sleeping with the fishes at the bottom of the river. But somehow, I doubt things would be that easy. Do you think he really can kill hundreds of people? Who knows? Him saying he already used his curse turned out to be a bluff. Hard to believe he could kill hundreds at once, even with the curse stone, but... All we can do is pray that he was lying. The condition for Nijima's curse stone, the one-sided reed, was only later discovered. Kills by dismemberant, one whose face, address, name, age, occupation, and location are all known by the curse bearer. And so, at sunset that day, out of 632 students enrolled at Komagata High, the 377 who were at home, each had one arm and one leg severed, one by one, in the order they appeared in the school register, they bled to death while screaming in agony. Having no known cause, this atrocity terrified the public, resulting in widespread panic. Before long, fear and speculation plunged society into total chaos, and mis misinformation about the curses began to spread. A series of unrelated incidents broke out, unleashing pandemonium beyond all control. While it is uncertain whether Fumichika Nejima intended things to go this far, Tetsuo Tsutsumi's daughter, Aomi Tono, was also killed by Nejima's curse shortly after. And Tetsuo Tsutsumi, unable to bear the heavy responsibility or the people's blame, quit the police force and fled from the public eye. At the very least, Nijima's goal of driving Tetsuo Tsutsumi to ruin could not have been more thoroughly achieved. Thus, with his rapturous satisfaction, the curtains close on... Nijima's grudge? Nijima's reminiscence? Alright, we got another ending. Can I skip this? Yes. What Nejima went on to use his enormous horde of soul dregs for remains unclear. But according to later reports, Nejima devoted himself to his master, a woman called Lady Ashino. Alright, so this has a split somewhere. Reach Nejima's bad ending. Uh, uh, having regained control of herself, Yako rejoins Mio on their search for the record of Fate's Yin Scroll so that they can stop the curse. However, they find themselves with scarcely any leads to follow. <clears throat> South Waragasui Street. I know we're supposed to be finding that record of Fate's Yen Scroll thing, but it sure would be nice if we had more of a lead to work with. Right now, our only option is to try and trace the bloodline of that Amiyoji Simon uh, Suchi Mikado today. But he's not a legitimate descendant of his family, so the library doesn't have anything about it. And since we've got nothing so far, we find ourselves here. So this is the Hihaku Soap's headquarters. So we're thinking that one of the high-ranking people here is most likely the mastermind. Chairwoman. Yamamori? Was it? Wait, are chairwoman high-ranking? <clears throat> Isn't the most important person in a company the president? Hmm, I'm not sure, but she's definitely an important person. Even if we're able to meet with her, what do we talk with her about? We can't just waltz in there and ask her if she knows about the inn scroll out of nowhere. Well, nothing venture, nothing gained, as they say. Ooh, is that your working style, Mio? Er, well, whenever I find myself out of options, I usually just jump right into the thick of it. Oh, if you're scared, I don't mind going in by myself. Scared, as if. Think of me as your trusty bodyguard. I don't mind going big and taking a chance. Oh, yeah, there's Yako, I know. Now, shall we? 
All right, let's give this a shot. Um, excuse us. Looks like we were out of luck. Who knew you needed an appointment months in advance to meet the chairwoman? Turns out she's super duper important. Even the receptionist gave us a cold shoulder after realizing we were just students. Maybe your private security would hear us out, but they seem to be out at the moment. Hmm, in that case... If Haku is no good, I don't know if we have any other options. There were a bunch of police cars speeding by here earlier. I wonder if something happened. Must be. I've seen a few police officers and they look like they were on edge. Could Inspector Satsumi have let that Nejima escape and let ev and everyone scrambling to find him? Oh, after all the effort we put into gathering information, that would be unfortunate. Uh, hi. Has Mio been doing stuff like this all by herself up until now? It's so dangerous and there's so many unknowns. It must be so tough for her. No wonder it'd be hard to make friends. Hmm? Something the matter? Nope. Let's go for it. I'm sure we'll be fine. I mean, we've managed to get this far. Hey, Mio, you know... Yeah? You might not look it, but you've got a bold side. A little reckless, even. Huh. You think? I suppose. Things not gonna... Uh, things not going to plan is just part of life in this world. No, I mean, I think it's a good thing. I'm the same way. I feel like we get along well together. Maybe that's one reason why. Oh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> oh, Mio, what about that one guy? The one Inspector Susumi checked with. I forget his name. Oh, right. Apparently, he never heard from Nak Nakagoshi. Not that we have any way of contacting him directly anyway. We just have to leave a message with the Paranormal Affairs, Affairs Bureau's messenger and hope it reaches him. He's always the one who contacts me, and even then, it's only instructions. Hmm. Well, I guess we're in a tight spot then. In which case, is waiting for a secretary the only thing we can do? Um, it looks to be... Barging in suddenly didn't work out. At this point, there might be nothing more you can do. I guess let's suspend then? Once your situation has changed, select resume to try again. So this is green, this is green, this is green. Let's try this again. Is it Komagata or the conversation? Let's start from the bridge. I did that. Fine. Aereo, put the gun away. Alright. But I'm ready to tackle him if he makes any sudden moves. Be my guest. Thank you kindly. I can breathe a little easier now. Alright, let's hope he cools off now that he's lowered his gun. No sudden moves now. Bet the same thing's gonna happen, though. Aereo's, uh, bet the same thing's going through Aereo's head right now. You're done. Oh. Naomi. Huh? What the? Whoa. Back up. Back up. Back up. The hell is she doing here? Crap. Our eyes just met. This is bad. Real bad. Why'd she have to pick now of all times? Grr. Get out of here. Damn it. B book it before he sees you. Ah, but I need to ask her about Namagaki. Shit. Boss. Uh, where... Uh, boss, where are you doing? Looking all over the place. Focus. Ha! Damn it! Fuck, he's fast. Ayami, get away! Ah! Well, 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 Ayami Tono. I've been looking for you for a very long time. Huh? What? Dad? Ayami, don't you dare, you bastard. Get away from her. Get over here. Ah! Get off, you're hurting me. Ah, stay right where you are sh or she dies. Hey, get back here. Make me. See you around, dumb fucks. Whoa! That piece of shit, uh, that piece of shit took Ayami hostage and ran off with her. After him, we can't let him get away.
from HQ to all bureaus. Suspect has evaded capture at Komagata Bridge and remains at large. He is currently on the run with one female hostage. I gotta say, boss, <clears throat> we really screwed that one up. Yeah, yeah, we did. It's my fault. All we can do now is hope he doesn't slip the net. We know his identity now, boss. He can't run forever. Come on, keep your chin up. I'm sure the hostage will be all right. I hope so. Can't believe that was your daughter. How crazy is that? Yeah. We've been trying to get a hold of her since this morning and she just shows up here? Who would have thought? What a twist of fate. Yeah, a bit too twisted of a, twi uh, of a twist for my liking. I think you need a breather, boss. You're not making sense. Does this mean that she was the one with in the car with Namagaki? Nah, we don't know that yet. Let's see what she has to say before we jump to any conclusions. You sound tired, boss. That standoff must have really done a number on you. Come on, let's treat ourselves to some Mitsumame. That'll put a spring in your step. Yeah, that sounds good. Some sugar might be just what I need to get my brain working. Whoa, hold on, boss. Sounds like patrols just got a message. I'll go check it out. Sure thing. Please be good news. Please be good news. Good news, boss. They found Nejima. No shit. What about the hostage? I don't know. They just said to come quick. Damn it. Guess we'll find out when we get there. 4.28 p.m., Fumichika Nejima, also known as Makoto Ashimaya, was discovered in the former Yasuda Gardens, beaten to death. The body suffered 110 distinct instances of blunt force trauma, and the case is being treated as a homicide. The, the deceased possession have not been recovered and appear to have been taken post-mortem. The location of the deceased's female hostage remains unclear. Police continue to pursue her as a person of interest. Guess let's check darkness. I just remembered that I heard the rules for the rite of resurrection when I got this curse stone. But killing other people would to bring someone back, that's out of the question. Hajime would never accept sacrificing another person to come back himself. None of this was ever an option to begin with. The way we lived. Ever since we were kids, we were always ready to die if that's what it came to. We'd never take our foot off the gas just because we were scared of death. We were never such big fans of living anyway. That's why we were always prepared for it. I used to wonder if we took things a little too lightly. But that's just how much we trusted each other. So I have no use for some shitty right. And that's the truth, Hajime. I think I've done all that I can do. All that's left now is to wait. Uh, Mayu's escape, complete the Mayu branch of chapter two. So it seems like this is the only thing that we can do right now. What is it? That person coming this way. What? That tall guy? Do you know him? Yeah, from a little while back. Mr. Yumioka, over here. Hmm. Oh. You are Gamiota's mis- uh, You're uh, Gamiota's manager, Mr. Yumioka. Yes? Good to see you again. Miss Kurosuzu. What a coincidence running into you here. Gamioto? Yumioka? He's been trying to avoid eye contact with Mio since he noticed it was her. Something's fishy. How have things been since we last met? 
If she just stays with her training, she won't uh, have to rely on cheating people anymore. Yes, she has been keeping at it. Cheating people? Miss Kurosuzu, so glad to see you are doing well. I assure you we've had no issues you need concern yourself with. You gotta tell me what happened. A case from a while back, a family overseeing a reliquary came to us saying they were being investigated by someone suspicious. Investigated? A psychic named Suigen Gemioto suddenly showed up. She said that she had a premonition that something terrible would happen and had to exercise the temple immediately. Sounds like a cover for a burglary. After they notified the police, I was dispatched there by Paranormal Affairs. I inspected the place myself but didn't see anything wrong so I sent them away. He acted as Gamioto's manager during the case. That is pretty suspicious. Apparently she was looking for something there, but I told her that's no excuse for fraud and sent her off with a scolding. And honestly, Gamioto didn't even have much spirit sense to speak of, which soured my mood on the whole thing. Right, so she was one of those types then. Well, she's involved in all kinds of stuff, so she may at least be knowledgeable about paranormal objects. But essentially, she's one of those fraudulent psychics that are so common nowadays. Like, he's been a little too nervous for just running into an acquaintance. If you have no further business with me, then I'll be on my... Oh, before you go. Gamioto seemed to know a lot about paranormal objects. It would be a huge help if we could ask her about something. And what might that be? Is she familiar with an ancient text called the Record of, Ra uh, Record of Fate's Yin Scroll? Or anything about the descendants of a non-Myoji named Simon Tsuchimikado? I beg your pardon. Miss Kurosuzu, how do you... So you do know about it. I see. If that's what you're after, then that means... Hold it. Don't tell me you're trying to snatch up some innocent schoolgirls this time. Stop right there. Huh? If it isn't Yumi uh, Yumioka, what a pleasure to see you again. What? Mayu, Mayu Chuzawa? What are you doing here? Huh? Chuzawa? This investigator here helped me out. You really did a number on me. What do you know? We just so happen to have some business with Hihaku ourselves. Why don't you join us? You can do that much for us, can't you? You work for Hihaku, after all. Depending on how this conversation goes, I won't have to get the police involved. Huh? You work for Hihaku? What's going on? There's really no way you can refuse, though, is there? You two young ladies must be involved as well. Would you care to join us? Oh, um, sure. Quite the view, isn't it? How long can you play dumb with this many people lined up and waiting for answers from you? You'd better just give in and come clean with everything you know. Ugh. She's Mayu Chozawa, the fiancé of Hajime Yoshimi, the police officer. I'll have to talk to her about Hitomi later. I'll cut to the chase then. Are you the ones who killed Hajime Yoshimi? No, we did not. Don't try and play dumb now. If not you, then who? That much I don't know. While it is true that we were after the information he possessed, he was killed by someone else before we could acquire it. Which forced us to target you instead, Miss Chozawa. And that's why you forced me to talk, and why I ended up with this curse, huh? Indeed, though I never thought you would escape. Well, it took a couple of miracles, but yeah, I got out. And just what information did Hajime have that you wanted? Hmm. You really think, you, really think you can get away without answering now? But... Fine, I'll let someone else ask you something for now. We were introduced briefly, briefly earlier, but this fishy-looking guy is a private investigator. I thought they were only like that in TV shows, but I guess they're pretty intense in real life, too. Now then, I've come to hand over the Haunting Clapper's Curse Stone like I promised. A Curse Stone? Thank you. I have to admit, I'm surprised that you are a man of your word. But first, I've got some questions about the Curse Stones you already have. What exactly do you want to know? 
earlier said that Hihaku have collected six curse stones already. Six? I'd like to confirm which of the seven myster uh, mysteries they correspond to. And why do you need to know that? Because I don't trust, of course. If you really collected them like you say, you'd have no problem saying which curse stones they are, right? First, the Whispering Canal. Good, good, and what else? Mayu Chozawa over there has the beckoning light. Yep, you were the one who made sure I got it. What? Unfortunately for you, I don't feel like handing it over. So I don't think it counts as one of yours. Ugh. Good to know. Anyway, do continue. Next, there's the ever-burning lantern, which we gave to Hideki Araishi. So you consider that one of Hihaku's, then? Whatever. We'll worry about that later. That's three. What about the others? Well, the others are... Ah, the foot-washing mansion and the evergreen beach. What? And lastly, the fool's possession, if I recall. So you claim. How about it, mademoiselle? That's wrong. Those three are with Inspector Satsumi. I gave the fool's possession to him myself, so I know he's wrong. There you have it. Too bad for you, pal. Ugh. Oh. If our agreement was founded on lies, then I have no duty to hand over my curse stone like I'd promised. Ugh. Oh. Meaning the only curse stone you have is the Whispering Canal. And it inevitably follows that you used it to kill that young man at Kinshibori Park. Such a horrible act, and to your own employee, no less. No, there you are mis No, there you are mistaken. To be entirely frank with you, we do not possess a single curse stone. What? We plan to collect the soul dregs using any method available to us, of course, as we needed the right. But committing murder ourselves was too much of a risk. We intended on having others collect the soul dregs for us. Is that so? Therefore, I myself have no soul dregs in my possession. It was our plan to arrange for particularly greedy individuals to receive the curses. What? It is possible Shogo Okie came to possess the Whispering Ca Canal because of that. But by the time I became aware of this, he was already dead. I don't believe you. Are you really trying to talk your way out of this now? Or do you really want me to believe that a uh, Hihaku employee was cursed by complete coincidence? That is the truth, whether you believe me or not. It must have been someone else entirely who took Shogo Okie's stone and killed him. I have no idea whatsoever whose hands the Whispering Canal is in now, nor where it may be. Oh, could it really be? Then it wasn't Hihaku who put the idea in Fumichika Nejima's head to get a curse stone either. Nejima? The only ones we've, uh, we've negotiated with are Iwai and Araishi. Interesting. Excuse me, but does that mean you don't know the location of the remaining curse stones either? There's one that hasn't been mentioned. What about the Taiko of Suguru? Ooh, good question, my mysterious mademoiselle. I'm afraid we have no information in that regard either. Have you heard anything about curse stones? I have nothing... Uh, have you heard enough about curse stones? I have nothing else to tell you. Hmm. You're done. Excuse me, Mr. Investigator? What is it, mademoiselle? Would you be willing to give up the curse stone you have? Ah, yes, you have a point. They're too dangerous to carelessly walk around with in one's pocket. However, sorry to disappoint you. That's not possible at the moment. And why is that? Ah, you don't know, do you? Then I'll tell you both you and your friend from Hyaku over there. Hmm? I doubt any of you have attempted it yet. But it seems the curse stones cannot be given to normal people. Huh? What? I actually tested it with the madam here earlier. Even if you give the curse stone to someone else, the curse bearer doesn't change, and the stone eventually makes its way back to the bearer. It's almost obvious when you think about it, seeing as how the curse stones appeared to the curse bearers of their own accord to begin with. But Inspector S Satsumi has collected curse stones from other curse bearers. Then Inspector Satsumi must be a curse bearer himself. Ah. So, from what you're saying, curse stones can only be transferred between curse bearers. And obtaining a curse stone alone doesn't make someone a curse bearer, so they can't use its curse. Exactly. So they aren't quite as dangerous as you think. As for Hihaku's intention of just collecting the curse stones for themselves, unfortunately for them, it was never going to work, unless there's a curse bearer among them. Ugh. That damn Araishi. How could he not know this? That must be why, since that I couldn't take Yako's curse stone. 
I returned it right away when I borrowed it from her earlier. That's precisely how it works, my mysterious mademoiselle. I'll give mine directly to Inspector Satsumi later. If you know Inspector Satsumi, then I think that's the best. Thank you. Alright, he's done, she's done. Uh, you. Excuse me, I had no idea that Gamioto was connected with Hihaku. So I'd just like to ask, was it Miss Yamamori from Hihaku who obtained the Record of Fates and passed it on to Araishi? No, that was not the case. Oh, my mistake. Was it Sweden, Gam uh, Sweden Gamioto's doing then? No, it was not. We first learned of the Record of Fates from Mr. Araishi. It was then that Miss Yamamori gained an interest and extended a contract to compensate him in return for his research and findings. Then who was it that activated the Feast of the Shadows to call forth the Curse of the Seven Mysteries? I give you my word that we had no part in that. We had learned from Araishi beforehand that something would happen at midnight last night. That is all. Hey, there's no way that's true. Stop lying! Ah, I must ask that you please refrain from violence. Hold on, Yako, it's all right. The minute I learned that Gamioto was none other than the Queen of Hyohaku herself, I felt that was the case. She doesn't have strong enough spirit sense for it. Oh, gotcha. Urgh. While it is somewhat shameful, if you require proof, then so be it. What, so all that talk of supernatural powers was just hot air? I don't think she has zero spirit sense, but even Yako here has more than her. I do? Also, the spirit power ling lingering in this park has been bothering me for quite some time. The person who died here must have had consider considerably powerful spirit sense. If they were a Hihaku employee, then maybe they should have been the one running things. My, to think Shogo Okie was so talented. At any rate, Hihaku wasn't the mastermind behind exposing the Record of Fates to the world and initiating the Feast of Shadows. I think we can be sure about that. Hmm. All right. Was Ayami Tono the one who did the Feast of Shadows? I, I've got to imagine it's either Haruwe or Ayami at this point. Haruwe has money, but Ayami has knowledge. And they said earlier that um, Tsutsumi's bloodline had strong, uh, strong resistance to magic. And you know about the Record of Fates Yin Scroll too, don't you? If you were researching the Rite of Resurrection and the Record of Fates, then you must have looked into the Yin Scroll as well. That's right. The Record of Fates alone wasn't enough to learn how to collect the soul dregs. I'm sure you looked into many things on your own, but how much do you actually know? Who and where Simon Tsuchimikado's descendants are? Were you able to find that sort of information with Gamioto's connections? Hmm. I can't reveal that. Then, would you prefer I expose to the public how Gamioto is a fraud with almost zero spirit sense? Ah. Oh. Fine. I understand. From the results of our independent research, I found that Simon Tsuchimikado's descent was Hajime Yoshimi. We knew that. What? So that's why you went after Hajime. However, Hajime y Yoshimi was only carrying a fragment of the whole. A fragment? That's right. He did say something about a fragment of an old manuscript. That's right. He did say something about a fragment of an old manuscript. The location of the Yin Scroll was hidden. This information was split into two and hidden in a pair of talismans, which were then passed down from generation to generation. Ah, talismans. I see. Hajime Yoshimi was supposed to have one, but it was almost certainly stolen when he was killed. It's possible that he knew the location of the other as well. So that's why you questioned me about things he had inherited. The girl Hajime had been helping recently must have had it then. Oh, Michio's talisman. Yes, Michio, Michio Shiraishi was also likely a descendant of Saiman Tsuchimikado. What? The talisman she carried as a keepsake from her father. We searched for, its ba for it based on Miss Chozawa's memories. However... Michio Shiraishi was already dead. Yes, by coincidence, she happened to be closely connected with, to Mr. Ewai, so we began our investigation there. But he was already dead too, leaving you in a quandary. I see. Mio, if we can get both of these talismans... Yep, we'll know the location of the Record of the Fates Yen Scroll. Wow, sometimes the answer is right under your nose. 
Sometimes those answers are the hardest to find. Yako, let's keep quiet about the location of the talismans for now, okay? Ah, right. No need for Yumi Yumioka to know. That was a close one. I almost let it slip. Okay, I think that's about all we have to ask him. We'll let you off for today since you went along with our questions nicely. Pleasure to work with you. We're done here. But the information you have. The hell are you whining about? I said we're done, so scram. Mm. That's all our business as well, so I shall be bidding you all farewell. Yes, right. Excuse me, Mr. Investigator, please don't forget about that curse stone. Don't you fret. I'll hand it over to Inspector Satsumi like I promised. I'm glad I didn't end up having to give it to that Yumioka. Let's take our leave, madam. With this, we'll be freed from this troublesome curse ourselves. I think Haraway is the mastermind. That lady and the investigator. We should keep an eye on them. Agreed. Really? Why? I think they're up to something. Just my intuition, but still. Yeah, I wonder what that investigator really wanted out of all of this. If his goal was getting information about the curse stones, then this might be bad. Oh, right. I got one of those curse stones, too. The beckoning light. Oh, right. If you wouldn't mind, would you give it to Inspector Satsumi without using it? Yeah, sure. If you introduce me to the cop, that is. I feel like if I keep carrying it around with me, I'll start getting some weird ideas, too. I just remembered. Mayu, I have something important to tell you. Whoa, what's with all the yelling all of a sudden? You know a girl named Tomi Okuda, don't you? Really? Hitomi has Hajime's talisman? Yes, he entrusted to her in a panic just before his death. He sensed an imminent crisis closing in on him, but Hitomi was the only one around that he could ask for help. That's so. I'm sorry she got left with such a big responsibility. That must mean that Hajime got killed by someone who was after that talisman. But since he gave it to someone else, they couldn't steal it like they wanted. I'll have to thank Hitomi for that. Hmm. Um, I also think it's going to be hard for us to get her to give up the talisman. Yeah, you may be right, but it was Hajime's dying request to her. So, you two need the talisman for something? Yeah. Hmm. Personally, I'd like to use the talisman as bait. Then I could get my hands on the bastard that killed Hajime. Please, I promise we'll uncover the mastermind behind all of this. They probably have supernatural abilities at their disposal. Please, leave them to us. Yeah, we'll catch them. Don't you worry. Well, look at that. You've got that look in your eyes. The look that young people get that says they'll get something that done no matter what it takes. How am I supposed to say no to that? You go find them and give them what they deserve for what they did to my Hajime, you hear? We will. I'm pretty mad at them myself. If punches work on them, I'll give them a good one. <laughs> now that I can get behind. I'll leave it to you two. Now then, your next move should be to find Hitomi and get that talisman. Though, isn't there one more talisman that you need? Right. We've got a pretty good idea of where the one Michio had is. We'll have to check with Inspector Satsumi about that. We should go back to the school and call him. You got it. Okay, I'll head to the high school now and wait for you there. Perfect. Alright, that is no longer green. And we've got two more. Let's start with Haruwe. Haruwe and Richter rescue Mayu, Cho Mayu Chozawa and interrogate her along with Takumi Yamioka, yet they fail to gain any particularly, particularly useful information about the curse bearers. They, did, they decide to return to Haruwe's home when... Shigima Mansion Reception Room. We've received an update on the hostage... We've received an update on the hostage situation. The 56-year-old male suspect who announced his intent to commit mass murder in Sumida City today is dead, had taken a woman hostage and gone on the run, but was found by the police in a park in Sumida after 4 p.m. and confirmed dead. The weapon the suspect was said to possess was nowhere to be found on site, and its whereabouts are currently unknown. Furthermore, the female hostage was not present, and the search for her continues. So this is the true timeline. Interesting. If it's being reported on the news, then that lends credence to her story. 
He was quite shaken just moments ago, but he seems better now. You'd think it'd be harder for him to keep his cool. Anyways, I should ask about her side of the story. Is there anything else we can interact with, or just Ayame? I wonder what her intentions are. How is she able to act like nothing happened? Is this just how girls are these days? Well, it's just like I said, right? The female hostage mentioned it on the news just now. That must have been you. Which means you killed Nejima with your own curse stone. Heh, <laughs> well, you said you'd give me refuge, so I came to take you up on that offer. What are you planning? Hmm? Me? Well, obviously. I'm on to my last resort. So, you're a curse bearer with a curse stone too, right? <laughs> are you surprised? Yes, I have a curse stone of my own. It's the Taiko of Suguru. Why go after other people's curse stones? Um, because pe killing people is bad, you know? Don't you think so too? You're right. It's wrong to kill people for the sake of resurrection. Right? It's not even one for one, so it's hardly a fair exchange. Either way, that's why I wanted to only use the soul drugs gathered by others. But that didn't work out in the end. No one had the backbone to use their curse. The world's gone too soft. With no one mercilessly using their curse in pursuit of their own goals, I had to take matters into my own hands. I heard Namagaki, that young man you were with, used his curse stone too. Huh? How do you know that? Ick, creepy much. Are you stalking me? I may have heard from a detective I know. Oh, there it is. Cops. Bet you know a bunch. I know your type. People who boast just because they know a couple of cops. But the police is filled with nothing but scum. My, you seem to hold quite a grudge against the force. Speaking of, this guy's really creeping me out. What's the deal with him anyway? You gonna explain? Even the way he moves is all weird and exaggerated. Right, right. I haven't introduced myself yet. I'm... Um, no. No thank you. So, what were we talking about again? Oh, right. Yutaro Namagaki. He's no good, honestly. He was such a wuss, I had to spur him on so many times for him to even use his curse, and even then he was pissing his pants. And just when I take my eyes off him, he hands over his curse stone to someone. Honestly, he's a disappointment. So that's what happened. Which is why I figured I had to do it myself if I wanted it done right, you know? That's why my last resort is collecting soul drugs on my own. Let me introduce myself. It's hard to talk to strangers. It is. And are you okay telling me who you are? Well, I won't stop you. Do as you please. Well, I am Haroe Shigima, and this is my house. My father and husband are both with the police. Is that so? Then you know that cops are just the worst people, right? Well, there are certainly many who are cold, especially with their own family. In a police family, one is always expected to just grin and bear it, no matter what happens. God, I know, right? What a relief, you understand. I think we might get along. Oh, well, I'm glad then. And I'm Richter Kai, private investigator. Oh, did I ask? But, hmm, you're an investigator? So your job is to sneak around and follow people to pry into their secrets, right? Oh, is that why you keep pro uh, probing with all these questions? You. I guess there's not much I can do to change that terrible impression you got of me. Hey lady, why are you working with this dude? I asked him to look into something for me. Really? It's just that he keeps looking this way. Isn't your father a, pol isn't your father a police officer as well? That man is not my father. Not a name or deed. Sounds like there's some bad blood there. I've already legally cut all ties. He even had the nerve to act all high and mighty today and still refused to help me. You met him today? Yes, today. Remember that chief, Satsumi, who was chasing Nejima? Well, that's him. My dad. What? You're his daughter? Former daughter. I've cut ties. He's never acted like a father, so he doesn't deserve the title. Hmm. 
You know, I heard something about that Nejima guy. Apparently he wanted to get revenge on Chief Inspector Sumi for his arrest by going after his daughter. Wait, really? And I heard the police had been searching non-stop to take you into protective custody. So that explains why the police were staking out your place too. Man, how could I have known that? They came in such intimidating numbers. Wait, huh, hold on a minute? Doesn't that mean that Nejima was specifically after my life today? That sounds about right. It's a good thing you got out unscathed, or rather managed to turn the tables on him. Oh, that means legally speaking it was self-defense. But that truly was quite frightening. To think I'd have just uh, I'd have to go through this just for being related to a cop. It's a disgrace. It truly is to cause their own child such trouble. I'm sorry. Um, it's okay. You're not the one that needs to apologize, lady. I'm sorry. I just it just reminded me of what happened to my son. Your son? What happened? My child was also kidnapped and murdered in order to enact revenge against the police, you see. What? How awful. That's terrible. I'm sorry to hear that. Ah, now that you say it, I do remember hearing about an incident like that last year. That must have been your son, huh? My condolences. Now that I think about it, although we've met a few times, I don't even know I didn't even know your name. I guess we're more like acquaintances now. So, when you were taken hostage by Nejima, you used the curse stone in the gardens and swiftly made your getaway. Well, yeah. I didn't really have time to think on it. At the time I only thought of how to get out of there. Then how about now? Could you use it again, your curse stone? Well, the curse stone doesn't respond during the day, but it's evening now. So I tried using the curse just now, and yep, it seems I activated. What? You're using it now? It might still be a little weak. I guess it's not supposed to be used repeatedly. But I think I could get it to work once more. Oh, not so. Sure is, so I'll give you a final warning. It's already started, so be careful, hmm? It started? What started? The curse, of course. All that's left is for the conditions to be fulfilled. She activated her curse. The curse stones could be used already. I let my guard down. I didn't think it could be used this early in the evening. Ma'am, please calm down. What should I do? Should I keep her talking? No, instead of talking about that, how about we talk about why you're so shaken? As I thought, you have a curse stone too. You're a curse bearer, aren't you? Yes, I am. I'm sure you've already noticed. Well, yeah, around last night. It was a little too obvious. Judging by your address, I'm guessing you've got the haunting clappers, right? Yes, that's right. There's a lot of soul dregs on the table for killing a curse bearer, you know. I'm well aware. Did you get soul dregs when you killed Nejima? Of course, his curse stone already contains some soul dregs as well. I think killing one more curse bearer will be enough for the right. You can combine soul dregs across several stones. Correct. All it needs is the prerequisite amount. As long as you've got that, it doesn't seem to matter where you got them from. I see. Then, you won't mind if I took them, right? My, my lady. You're quite motivated, aren't you? Ma'am. Your father, the chief inspector. I met him not too long ago. Oh, really? He came off a little stiff and awkward. Ha, there's a surprise. But there was something charming about his seriousness, and he seemed like he cared a lot about his daughter. Oh, please cut it out. It's gross. You don't know a thing about us. Outsiders shouldn't butt into another family's affairs. Though he may as well be a stranger to me now. Even if you've cut legal ties, you're still related by blood. Huh? We're not related at all. Huh? He probably thought that I never noticed it, but it wasn't hard for me to figure out that I wasn't related to them by blood. So you were adopted? Well, I got curious, so I looked into it. It was all pretty straightforward. I was a baby when they took me in. All they did was raise me. 
My mother first got pregnant shortly after she married, <clears throat> but it was a stillbirth. The whole affair left a deep wound on her heart. My father couldn't bear to see it. So it was for her sake that he did it. I was a substitute, a replacement for the child she lost. He decided that all by himself. He didn't discuss it. Maybe he was trying to be thoughtful. So any baby would have been fine, as long as I could have, uh, could have comforted the woman who hoped to become a mother. Putting it in such a way. It's not easy to raise a child. My mother was bewildered, wouldn't you be, after being told to raise a baby that wasn't your own? But she couldn't just abandon the baby either. Yet my father just left everything to my mother and never lent a hand. He is so damn selfish. The two of them grew apart. I watched them try and figure out how to understand each other, and the sight of it disgusted me. It was a messed up family, I tell you. Well, I guess my presence was to blame for the, that rift to begin with. You shouldn't say that. I know he's bad at expressing himself and has his work, but still, that shouldn't be an excuse. But knowing all that, I couldn't take it anymore. It just made me want to hurry up and leave my home and live on my own. I still rely on him for tuition and allowance, but that much is normal for most kids, right? I don't want him to start acting like he's my father now just because he's doing the minimum. I'm sorry to hear that. It sounds like it was tough for all of you. I'm sorry, you're right. It's not my place to talk about your family. Ah, well, I may have said too much. I think I spilled it all. Uh, I think I spilled all that when I don't even know what the conditions are. Could it be uh, what we were talking about had something to do with the activation conditions for the haunting clappers? Who knows? Hmm. Do you smoke? Huh? Well, a little. Feel free to smoke if you want to, please. I'm okay. I don't see any ashtrays out on display either. Does no one smoke in this family? A little rare, isn't it? Nobody in the family does. Then why did you ask me if I did all of a sudden? Well, hmm. How did you kill Fumichika Nejima? I'm not telling you. I only ask because it does concern me. He was one of the reasons my child was kidnapped. There's not much to say. We talked and he cleared the conditions for my stone. Did he show any signs of remorse over his past crimes? It didn't feel like he did, no. I see. The world is full of trash men, I tell you. That's... I agree. In a way, I guess you could say you put a stop to Nijima's mass murder schemes. Hmm, about that. There's no guarantee that I won't do it myself. Huh? I picked up his curse stone on the, of the one-sided reed. It really is something else. Unfortunately, I can't use a curse stone that's not mine until it's late at night. Really? Are you okay with telling me that? Ah, how silly of me. I let that slip. Teehee. What is your wish, Shayame? Is it really to resurrect Katsushika Hokusai? Yes, there's no life that holds more value than his. Including my own. You're saying you'd be willing to die if it meant bringing, back, uh, bringing Hokusai back to life. Not all life is equal. At least, not to me. A life that can birth art with the power to move hearts is infinitely wor more worthy. Compared to that, the life of something like me, someone like me, someone that can't produce a thing, has no value. That's unhinged. I'm still young. It's the age for wild thoughts. But, aren't you the same as me? What? You've got a life more important than your own. A life you consider more important than the lives of many others. That's what you're doing it all for, isn't it? You're right. If I can save my son... I couldn't care less about my life or the lives of others. Who's unhinged now? I'm a mother. It is what it is. Dang, the feeling of a proper parent or something else. But if that's your wish, then... What do you plan on doing if you don't get your wish? Oh, I haven't thought of it. I might just keep on trying to bring Hakusai back some other way. You really are obsessed. You and Hihaku's chairwoman might be cut out, cut from the same cloth. Who's that? 
She's like an all-powerful vortex of obsession turned to yokai level proportions. Hmm, you're saying I'll end up like her? Are you looking forward to such a future? I'd rather not have to wait till I'm old and creaking. I want it to happen now. I'll put my life on the line for Hokusai. Listen, Ayame. I have something to ask you. No. The answer is no. The curse stone in your possession. I... I'm not giving it up. You're right. We're both made of stronger stuff than that. You're not giving it up. And neither am I. You know full well, right? That there's no room left for negotiation here. You're right, there's not. I think it's forcing us to use the curse. Did you try to use your curse just now? It seems I didn't meet your curse's conditions. I wonder if it was smart to secretly toss the lighter I was carrying earlier. When did... You made a mistake when you decided to ask me about smoking. If a source of fire is the condition for your stone, then you won't see me falling for it now. You wasted your chance with all this chatter. All you need to do is activate your curse first. I brought everything Nejima had on him, including the lighter he was holding. But it's over now. Yes, I concede. Alrighty. With your cards on the table, you're out of options. It might be possible for Mr. Investigator over there to pin me down by force. But he's not going to do that, is he? Correct. I won't take that risk. Not while your curse's conditions are unknown. Coward came to kill you and acquire your soul dregs, but after hearing you out, I got a question for you. Why don't you just give up on the right of resurrection? You said it was your son, right? The one you want to bring back? But haven't you done enough? I'm sure your son is content knowing you cared for him this much. I'm truly willing to die to resurrect Hokusai, but you can't say the same, right? If you're going to bring your son back, you have to be alive as well, right? In fact, what you really want is for both of you to live, right? Yes. Well, even if you both live to see it, your son would grow up knowing you for who you are, someone who stole the lives of others to bring him back. You would be putting the burden of shouldering all the lives sacrificed for, uh, for him on his little shoulders. Are you really okay with that? Ugh. If you didn't even think about that, then what you're doing is not for your son. It's for yourself. Are you just bringing him back to fulfill your own desires? That's not... Ma'am. What she's saying may be harsh, but holds a kernel of truth. Don't reduce yourself to, something, to nothing but a mother who would sacrifice anything for her son. But that's not... We discovered the truth behind his kidnapping. Next, you should take some time to come to understand your own feelings. I'll help you every step of the way. Getting to the heart of things is what an investigator does. What will you do? Ma'am? If you relinquish the curse stone to a curse bearer, you will no longer be a curse bearer. You won't be a target anymore. Ayami is giving you a chance. Think hard, and then give your answer. Very well. Here. Thanks. Glad you could see reason. Ma'am. You made the right choice. Dang, you really didn't collect any soul drags, huh? I promised myself that if I ever used it, it would be only once. But in the end, it didn't come down to numbers. So they only need to be carrying a flame. That seems pretty practical. Well, I'll be taking my leave then. There's no point in going after you for soul drags, so I'm off to the next curse bearer. Do you know who remains? You speak as if you've already figured it out. Mm-hmm. I got a pretty good idea from our talk. What will you do? Do you plan to stop me? 
It's not my place to intervene. All right, then. Hey, lady, can I borrow your phone? I don't mind. But who are you calling? Hmm? The cops. I think it would be faster if I called them directly. Is the last resort still green? It is. Okay. Uh, complete the Harway branch of chapter two. Ma'am, please, think this through. Ah! Ha! Ha! Ma'am, why? It was the only way. Richter. Could we... Settle in any outstanding tabs now? Yeah, sure. Some days later. I'm Amori. You got a moment? Of course. What is it, Mr. Richter? I was just curious. Have you heard of the legend of the mother who prayed to the Sumida River and resurrected her dead child? What are you on about? Mm-hmm. The mother searched so desperately for her abducted child that she lost her mind. Her son was found dead in Sumida River, so she then built a mound and continued to pray there until... Her son somehow emerged from the mound, back from the dead. Or so the legend goes. I heard it's being adapted into a no play, too. Interesting. And? Well, it just had me thinking that legends really do exist. Um, sorry to ask again, but... What are you on about? I actually really like that ending. I think that it, it fits with the characters. Never mind. It is what it is. Welcome to my office. It might be small and dirty, but welcome. Come on, Ernestine. Say hello. That's it. Good girl. Oh, that boy over there? That must be... Hey kid, I'm a private investigator. I worked with your mother not too long ago. What's that? You want to be an investigator when you grow up too? That's great. It's so much better than becoming a police officer. Hey, hey, I'm Amori. Don't you tell the kid to give up on his dreams? I think it's a great idea. Why don't you bring us all some tea instead? Ahem, pardon me. Let's start over. What brings you to my humble office today? Ending 3, Haraway's Legacy. Uh, there's still another green there. Why is there another green there? Ah, there we go. Huh. Ma'am, ma'am, damn. Did she fulfill the conditions? She sure did. Okay, it's time for a beatdown. Jeez, why do you try to hide it now of all times? I wouldn't have come if you weren't a curse bearer. Ah, ah. Stop. Hmm, too bad, she's already dead. This is horrific. 
I'll be taking her curse stone. Well, huh? All the haunting clappers needed was a source of fire? That was a close one. Now then, what will you do, Mr. Investigator? Ugh. You're not a curse bearer, so you're not a curse bearer, so I don't have any reason to kill you. But I won't show you mercy if you're going to try and capture me. So, what'll it be? I still don't know how our curse works. It's too risky to make a move. Uh, your employer's already dead anyway, so there's no reason for you to go out of your way to arrest me, right? I could still do my duty as a citizen and report you, you know. Oh, what a surprise. This is when you decide to suddenly choose the side of righteousness? She was after the same thing, you know. There's no clean hands when it comes to soul drugs. Well, it looks like you don't have anything to say about that. I'll be taking my leave then. Bye-bye. Upon killing Harue Shigima, a fellow curse bearer, Ayomi Tono obtained more than enough soul dregs for the rite of resurrection. However, it turned out that resurrecting someone who died a long time ago required an even larger amount. To fulfill her heart's deepest desire, she'd need to harvest more. So, she waited for the sun to set for when the Feast of Shadows effects were at its peak. And she used the one-sided reed curse stone she had stolen from Fumanchika Nejima. With it, she proceeded to kill all those whose personal information she knew, starting with those who mattered least to her. About the one-sided reed. Kills by dismemberment one whose face, address, name, occupation, and location are all known by the curse bearer. Many of them were random men, gullible and disposable, drawn in by the allure of a female university student. One noteworthy victim among them was Tetsuo Satsumi, who, being curse bearer himself, was promptly targeted for his soul dregs. Satsumi's death threw the investigation efforts into disarray, allowing Ayami to evade capture. Afterwards, she acquired various ad address registers and phone books and systematically killed the people listed in them. Unsuspecting victims could be safe at home, only to suddenly have their limbs severed. The strange death shook society to its core. But all things must come to an end, and so in time the killing stopped. Sometime after the killings, a modern-day genius female ukiyo-e artist burst onto the art scene. She introduced herself as the mysterious mad painteress, and her fame grew quickly as she presented one incredible work after another. Praised as the modern reincarnation of Katsushika Hokusai, she quickly made her own mark on, the, on history. Ending 4, Ayami's Aspiration so it wasn't Ayami who did the Feast, uh, Feast of Crows, Feast of Spirits. Uh, Ayami's Aspiration, reach Ayami's bad ending. Alright, so we were back at one. we still got time. Preparing for battle. Together with Yoshimi's fiancée Mayu, uh, Yako and Mio report all they've learned so far to Satsumi and the others. Putting all their stories together, they can see their final objective at long last. Oklahoma got a high school. Mr. Satsumi, this is Mayu uh, Chozawa. Ah, so you're the one. The Sumida police was the Sumida police was looking for you. Glad to see you're alright. Sorry, I should have told someone I was okay. I was just so pissed off. Falling right into Hihaku's hands, I got myself into some deep shit. Hihaku seems like they're still up to something. We'll have to make sure they clean up their act once and for all. Get it? because they sell soap. Nice one, boss. You're really on top of your game today. Stop trying to make me feel better. I shouldn't have said anything. More importantly, Mayu, thank you for your cooperation with Yoshimi. We'll get to the bottom of it, I promise. Oh, you must be Detective Ario. I heard a lot about you from Hajime. I'll be counting on you. Catch whoever did this, no matter what. Uh, what do we have? They've all but finished investigating the crime scene and the police have mostly left, but they're letting us use the school as our base of communications as per Inspector Satsumi's request. Oh, Mr. Satsumi. I received a message from Paranormal Affairs earlier. It wasn't from Nakagoshi, but I had someone look into something for me. So even the desk jockeys are lending a hand. Brings a tear to your eye. So what did they say? Right, about the Anmyoji woman who was an Ido at the time of the Honjo incident. She was a person of great beauty and discerning taste, but also shamelessly did whatever she wanted. 
It seems to match the person seen in the resentful memory from the foot washing machine. Huh, so she must be the one who fought with Simon over the right. And they found that her name was Ashino. Ashino, huh? What else? Hmm, that's all. That's not much help. Oh, but... Apparently she was quite the powerful on Miyoji, and she died bearing a similarly powerful resentment. It's possible that she became a vengeful spirit with a connection to the Seven Mysteries. A vengeful spirit? If any descendants of Shino or poor people otherwise closely aligned with her life live today, there's a possibility that the spirit awakened and possessed them. Yeah, you mentioned before that spirits can possess people who are closely in sync with them. Though this, of course, doesn't mean the spirit houses her complete personality. Her resentment and her spirit power, those, of the par uh, those are the parts of her that would have the strongest influence. Since Simon's descendants are still around in the present, it wouldn't be surprising if Shino's were too. They might just be desk jockeys, but they wouldn't give us this info if it was only speculation. They must have found some amount of evidence, looking into abnormal uh, phenomenon uh, or things like that. Oh, the Feast of Shadows. There it is, our abnormal phenomenon. Mio, what do you mean? The person who insist, uh, initiated the curse this time, who we've been calling the mastermind. They might be possessed by the vengeful spirit of the Anmyoji, named Ashino, the enemy of Simon. Do we have any idea who they could be or where to find them? Like, if you looked at them, Mio, would you be able to tell right away? Er... It's like how I didn't realize that Michio had fused with your consciousness, Yako. Common spirits will leak spirit energy left and right, so I can notice them just by looking carefully. But when spirits of a higher caliber fuse with someone's consciousness, detecting them isn't so simple. Oh. I'm sorry. My skills need a lot of work, and I don't have anything else to offer. Mio, that's not true at all. You're fine. We'll make this work somehow or other. Thanks. I'm not sure why, but I feel fired up. I feel like we're closing in, uh, we're close to the moment of truth. I think Mio feels the same. Basically, I believe the master mastermind behind everything is a woman possessed by the vengeful spirit of the Anmyoji Ashino. I see. Is this mastermind also the one who killed Hajime trying to get the record of Fate Sien Scroll? Yes, I think that's very likely. So that's how it is, huh? Then I want you to catch them no matter what. Alright, you're done. Mayu rushed to Hitomi's place and back for us. She's been trying to appear calm, but I'm sure she must still be in shock. Oh, Mayu, did you meet with Tomi? Yeah, I met her at the spot I was told. She was acting tough, but I think the incident with Hajime has her really shaken up. I briefly explained our situation and had her give Hajime's talisman to me. Here, this is what you're looking for, right? Yes, I believe that's it. Thank you so much. Um, Mr. Tsumi, about this. Right, you should hold on to it, Mio. Not like we could use it as is. Try to figure out what we'll need to do once we're, we get both halves together. Understood. I'll see what I can do. Do you know where the other talisman is? Um, yes, probably. This is Hajime's last job. Finish it for him, okay? We will. I guess this is the end of his family line too, huh? All the people who inherited that talisman before him are already gone. You're done. I bet he's making, I bet he's making jokes and stuff at a time like this because he doesn't want to stress us out. I wonder if he's able to stay so calm because of experience, or if he's just that kind of person. You're done. Ah, I already had a curse stone too. Yeah, I should give it to you then, right? Those things really are a pain in the ass. I'll gladly hand it over to you before it starts giving me any crazy ideas. So, this is the beckoning light, huh? Alright, it's safe and sound with me. Sorry you won't be able to bring him back. Don't worry about it. He and I were always prepared for the worst anyway. What the? What's wrong? Damn. The trigger for the Beckoning Light's curse is some serious shit. Yeah, I thought so too. That's why I said I'd, it'd give me weird ideas. See what I mean now? How's it work? I'll leave you a note you can read later. We have more important things to worry about now. Right. Mr. Tsumi, does that make it five curse stones that you're, you've gathered now? Should be. I want to get the other four under wraps as soon as we can. Let's see. I have no idea about the Whispering Canal. Someone made off with the one-sided reed, which Nijima had, so that's Ayami. Yeah, damn shame. After that, we don't know about the Taiko Suguru either, do we? That's also Ayami. So, we can assume the curse bearers are still prowling around out there with those ones. What a headache. Hopefully we can find them soon. Alright, you're done. 
Sectavario was nice enough to get us something to drink earlier. Seeing a detective take time for little things like that helps put my mind at, at ease a little. Come to think of it, did old man Ashamaya end up getting away? Ah, uh, so word's already out, huh? He was cornered, but managed to take a hostage and escape, is what I heard on the radio. What happened after that? So that, that's all they're reporting. Here's what really happened. He was killed? And the hostage was Satsumi's daughter, whose whereabouts are still unknown. Yep, his daughter showing up was a huge surprise. Even Boss couldn't believe it. Damn it, the hell do you expect? No one could have seen that coming. So there's already an, emergen an emergency search underway for her as a key witness and suspect. I'll be rejoining the search for her after we're done here. Key witness and suspect. But wasn't she a hostage? Could she have killed Nejima and fled the scene? Well, it's just a possibility. Mm. If we're talking possibilities, might as well tell them everything. It's very li likely that Nejima was killed by a curse stone. What? By a curse bearer? Oh, it's already evening, so the effect of the Feast of Shadows would be starting to return. Yeah, which makes it likely that the curse was used to kill him. Boss, you're repeating yourself. Try to calm down for a sec. But that would mean... The inspector's daughter is probably a curse bearer, right? Huh, did you say something? Maybe I'm losing my hearing in my old age. Boss, you can hear just fine. Don't play the old man card every time you want to get out of something. We even talked about how she might have the Taiko of Suguru, if that's the case. Did we? My memory's a little hazy. You've got a soft spot for your daughter, don't you, Inspector? Err. It just hits a little cl too close to home now. But either way, we have to find her as soon as possible. That's why we'll be joining the search as soon as we're done here. One more thing, there's a very good chance that his daughter has Michio Shiro Ishii's talisman. All the more reason for you to get back to that search. Best of luck. What the hell has she gotten herself into? Now, is that everything we need to chat about? If you don't need anything else, we'll be going back to the search. Um, there is actually one thing. Oh, what's that? Um, just completely hypothetically. Hypothetically, what if the inspector's daughter was the mastermind? I mean, she's a woman. It seems like she was after the talismans. Hmm, sorry. Don't really understand what you mean. Boss, come on. We've got to look at the facts. But that would mean Inspector Satsumi would also have to be one of Ashinu's descendants. Oh, right. You're just a normal person, right, Inspector? Unless that's why you're so resistant to the paranormal. Don't believe I've ever heard anything about being related to some Amiyoji. Oh. But, well, if you put it like that, her being the mastermind, it's possible. Really? Uh, I say possible, but I mean unlikely, is what I want to think. Damn it, I don't even want to imagine it. Boss, if we're going to consider it, we have to do it properly. No dragging your heels about it. No, it's not that. There's something I never told her, never wanted to tell her. The truth is, she's not my real daughter. What? 20 years ago. Well, it's a long story, but we took her in when she was just a baby. Do you know anything about her birth parents? You could say I do, I guess, but really, I don't know anything. What's that supposed to mean? I don't get it. Ariel, you heard what I said, didn't you? Just now? About 20 years ago? No, boss, that can't be. Nejima's? That's right. When we arrested Fumichika Nejima, there was a baby at his house on the brink of death. That was my daughter, Ayami Tsutsumi. She goes by Ayami Tono now. What? Someone had to take care of her. A baby holds no blame for the circumstances she came from. But boss, according to Nejima, that baby, it's his former lover reincarnated using black magic. What? Personally, I think that story is bullshit. According to Nejima, my goodness. It's hard to believe from Nejima's behavior, but could it really be true? I've got a few doubts. We have to question whether the Shino woman ever really existed in the first place. There are no records of her and no body was found. Her name never came up once during the invest investigation. Even if this woman really existed, I'm skeptical that someone could be reincarnated as a baby through black magic. I agree. No matter how you look at it, a spell with that effect is hard to believe. Even the supernatural has rules that must be followed. Seems more likely he's deluded himself, not wanting to recognize that a spell he risked his life on failed to work. That's my thinking, too. The more natural conclusion is that the baby is his and Shino's, and that she died in childbirth. As long as we don't know Shino's origins, we have to consider the possibility that she could be a descendant of a Shino. 
Huh. If nothing else, their names are pretty similar. Okay, assuming all of that is true for a moment. Ayami getting taken away by Nejima and then killing him, that would mean that she killed her own father. Calm down, that is all still conjecture. But now that Nejima is dead, we have no means to investigate. So regardless of everything, there's only one thing that matters. She's my daughter. And her parent, I, as her parent, I'm responsible for her. Nothing can change that. I understand. All right, we should get back to the search. We'll find her and clear up all of this. Yes, sir. Talisman you young ladies are looking for has something to do uh, with this as well. I'd appreciate it if you could help us find it. So if anything happens, please call the police. We will. I'm worried about Hitomi, so I'm going to head to where she is. I'll be waiting to hear some good news from you all. Alright, conclusion. Looks like this is going to be the end. We still have a lot of time. Satsumi and Aerio continue their investigation, deciding to meet with Ayami Tono to get to the bottom of it all. What will be the conclusion of the curses of the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo to Simon and Ashino's intertwined fates? Se uh, Tetsuo Satsumi, 6 p.m. Sumida River. Hey. How long has it been since we saw each other? Three years? How have you been? I think the last time was when you came to see me after deciding to go to university. That wasn't because I wanted to see you. I just needed money to pay my tuition. Ha. Huh. Not one to mince words, huh? You came alone, right? Yeah, it's just me. You make it sound like I'm handing over ransom money for hostages. I just don't want to get caught, okay? Never thought I'd see the day you called the police. There's something I need to see you about. Well, all right. All right, then. We've got a lot to talk about, so let's go through things one by one. Sun is starting to dip down into the horizon. This long, long day is about to end. We don't have to worry about Nechima's threat anymore, but I sure didn't expect this to happen. Bushes. Huh? What was that? Did something just move over there? Gah, what the hell are those idiots doing? I told them not to come. Damn it. Shit, I don't want to know what'll happen if they get found out. Whatever I do, I can't... No. I want to I wanna look at the bushes again. Alright. Better curse stone. You have a curse stone, don't you? I do. You wouldn't happen to feel like handing it over, would you? The police will hand handle any damage this curse caused. Now, before you do any more wrong with it. I'm not giving it up. Of course not. Me being a curse bearer, are you after my life? That's exactly what I'm here for. I didn't come to chat. We can talk all you want, but as soon as the condition for my curse is met, I'll use it, no hesitation. Or, do you have more than one? How many curse stones do you have? Three. Not that it matters. Three, huh? I'm not handing them over. Why are you willing to go so far for the rite of resurrection? What do you want with it? Even if I told you, you wouldn't understand. You just call it stupid and dismiss the idea completely. Come on, I wouldn't do that. Maybe together we can think up a way for you to get what you want without resurrection. I'm going to bring uh, Katsushika Hokusai back to life. Hokusai? What? Hokusai the ukiyo e artist? That Hokusai? You want to bring him back to life? That'd be quite the fiend, huh? That's... You... I heard you liked his art, but why would you do something so stupid? See? Gah! The only time I ever felt there was a place I belonged was when I was immersed in the dreamlike world of ukiyo -e. Though I'm sure you never noticed. Really? I had no idea. It saved me. Hokusai is the reason I'm still alive today. I didn't know you felt so hopeless. You would only realize it now, but it's too late. Feeling sorry won't do either of us any good. From the moment I heard about the Rite of Resurrection, I knew that was my destiny. If this is all I'll ever accomplish, I'll die happy. You're really serious about this. Then I'll put this bluntly. Did you kill Nejima? 
And if I did, would you hide me from the police? Uh, well, I, I don't know if I... That's what I thought. Your job is the only thing you really care about. Yes, I did it. You. I don't think he even knew I was a curse bearer. He brought me to those gardens, and I realized while he was talking to me that he fulfilled the condition of my curse, so I just gave it a shot. I didn't think it would actually activate. So, there's no going back now. That's not true. You can still make things right before you make them worse. Then let me say it another way. This is my chance, and I won't throw it away. Your chance. Did Nejima say anything to you? He said a lot of bad things about you, that's for sure. Yeah, not surprised there. So I said a lot of bad things about you back. I didn't want to be outdone. Harsh. In that sense, I felt just a little like he was my kindred spirit. No, no, no. Kindred spirit? What are you talking about? He's a dangerous criminal. But I'm a murderer now too, aren't I? Maybe we're not so different. Oh. No, you're, you're different. Am I? Well, maybe not that different. But at least you're honest. I know I haven't been the best father, but I wonder of all the fathers in the world, are there any who wouldn't cover for their child if they'd committed crime? How should I know? You're the detective here. You must have seen plenty of cases like that. Yeah, plenty of parents take the fall for their children or give them a place to hide. As a person, it's wrong, but maybe as a parent, it's the right thing to do. I don't know. But I think having a father like that would make it easier to go to him for advice if I did do something wrong. Maybe there's a sense of security in knowing that no matter what happened, you'd have at least one person on your side. I see. So that's what it would take to be on your side. I... I can't do that. That's okay. I wasn't really expecting you to. So Nejima really didn't tell you anything? Not really, no. Can I ask you one thing? Do you know anything about the talisman Michio Shiraishi had? Michio Shiraishi. From the car crash you were in with that Na Namagaki guy. Oh, with Yutaro. Yeah, it was there. Yutaro? That sounds like... So you, you and him were... I mean... Eh, not really. He was kind of a boring guy. What? You're serious? But he said... Ah, you're getting off track, Mr. Susumi. The talisman. Get back to the talisman. We shouldn't have relied on him for this. Well, if you don't plan on seeing him again, it doesn't matter. But with the hidden run case on top of everything, you're really in deep. Is that really what you wanted to talk about? Yeah. I mean, no. Tell me about the talisman. Did you take it from the scene? You mean this? That's it. I picked it up at the scene of the crash. I didn't want to leave fingerprints behind. That's all? There's really no other reason? What's the big deal? Is it really that special, this whole thing? Yeah, it's real important. Would you mind giving it to me? Important? For what? For putting a stop to the curses of the Seven Mysteries. Oh, so that means if I give you the talisman, I won't be able to use the right. Then no way, I'm definitely keeping it. Err, I screwed that one up. Mr. Satsumi, you really can't do better than that? Come on, the talisman. Will you give me the talisman? What? No way. I can't lose the right. I'm sorry I couldn't save you from Nejima. Are you hurt? And there it is. That's so like you. What? You're the only you're only mentioning that now? Shouldn't that have been the first thing you asked me? Er, well I was just You're not worried about me. All you care about is yourself. Yeah, you're right. I've been selfish, I know. Aw, oh, come on, Mr. Sumi. You can do better than that. He really screwed up there, huh? I'm fine. I managed to get away somehow or another. Right. I'm glad. How is she? Yasko, I mean. Mom? I haven't kept in touch with her. I've been on my own this whole time. I'm sure you've reached out to her, though, haven't you? I did call her this morning, actually, just to make sure she was safe. She's been running around all over the place looking for you. Hmm. Sounds like she's fine to me. Did you contact her after I called the police to tell her you'd heard from me? I did not. Tisk tisk. 
Well, I've heard you're into nightlife and staying out late these days. Didn't want her to worry more than she already was. You're one to talk. I think I've let you talk enough. Mind letting me have a turn? By all means. You're hiding something. You're hiding something from me, aren't you? Well, sure. You can't live as long as I have without having a secret or two. Of course you tried to dodge the question. Now then. Let me tell you how many how my curse down, the Taiko Suguru, works. What? My curse bludgeons to death anyone I find out is hiding something from me. So if you try to cover something up that I know is true, I'll be able to use my curse on you. With that in mind, can I ask you one more thing? Ah, I get it. Why you wanted to see me. Then let me tell you one thing first. The Evergreen Beach has a similar condition. I can use my curse on anyone who tells me a lie. What? How's that fair? And you'd use that curse on me? As an officer of the law, it's inexcusable. But as a parent with a duty to his child, I have no other choice. Are you threatening me? Do you really think that's enough to convince me to do as you say? I don't want to use it either, but for your sake, I suggest you try not to lie. Go ahead then. If I lie, then so be it. Okay, I'm going to ask. If you try to hide it now, you, re you really will die. Am I... Am I your real daughter? I'm just a baby you picked up to replace your stillborn, aren't I? And you could never bring yourself to kill me, uh, to tell me who my real parents were, so you just kept hiding it. Still too much of a coward to tell me, huh? You don't like the truth, so you won't admit it. That's my, that my real parent is the man I was just with, Ayame. Is that all you have to say? Then I only have one answer for you. You are, honestly and truly, our daughter. Nothing more, nothing less. Even now, you're still trying to hide it? Why? Are you really that stupid? Gah! Ah! Boss! Boss! Why? Is your pride worth dying for? Huh, I should have known. Why? Why go this far to hide it? Ayame, listen. Huh? You're... how? Ayame, be proud. No matter what happens, you are our precious daughter. No way. How are you still alive? I don't know what the piece of shit Nejima filled your head with. But you're not Shino. And you're not a Shino either. You are our daughter, Ayame Tsutsumi. Ah, right, I guess. I guess it's Tono now. Well, that's fine too. Tsutsumi, Tono, both will always be part of who you are. What? Why are you doing this? That's not true. The curse proves that it's not. Sure, you probably don't have any mem uh, many memories of us playing together. And I did leave everything at home to your mom. And I was barely ever there for you. Even so, when I was working, no matter how grisly a crime scene I was at, all I ever wanted was for you to grow up to be happy. That's it. Why say all of this now? So do one last thing for me. I want you to tell me the truth too. And if you lie to me now, I'm taking you with me. Stop, I can't. The mastermind behind all of this, the one who awakened the curses of the seven mysteries in order to use the right. Wasn't you, was it? No, no, I wouldn't even know how to do that. And picking up Michio Shiraishi's talisman was just coincidence, right? Huh? Yeah, I already told you that. Ah, good. Hearing that, I can rest easy. You're nothing like Nejima. You can stand on your own two legs. You can keep living without escaping into a fantasy. You can hate me. You can dream all the crazy dreams you want. Just don't ever stop trying to do good. You're a victim of your curse, too. It's not too late to atone for the hidden run, for using the curse. Don't run away. You can still make things right. I know you can, because you're my daughter. And after that, just live the best life that you can. Dad. Ah. Boss. Boss.
That day, at 6.18 p.m., Ayami Tono was taken into custody. Tetsuo Satsumi's death was confirmed at the same time. The five curse stones possessed by Satsumi, as well as the three given up by Ami, lost their curse bearers. This temporarily extinguished their spirit power, allowing Mio Kurosuzu to obtain them and sail them away without difficulty. The yin talisman possessed by Ayami Tono was recovered and trusted to Mio Kurosuzu as well. Thus, any massacre that could potentially be caused by this iteration of the curses was prevented before it could ever happen. Or so it seemed. Uh, Master of the Seven Mysteries, acquire all curse echoes. The Enduring Superstition. There once was a daimyo from the Hirosaki Domain in the Suguru who built a residence of the, in Mido Richo, Mido Richo on a large piece of land. On this estate was an almost eight meter tall tower that served as a lookout for fires. Only a designated firefighter was allowed to use the large drum that resided atop the, pow- the tower in the event of fire. While most towers use wooden blocks to sound the fire alarm, for some reason this residence was permitted to use drums. The residence and its special privileges led to much speculation and gossip amongst the town folk. Uh, curse power kills by bludgeoning one who is discovered to be hiding something from the curse bearer. The deep sound of drums once more reverberates through the night air. How long has it been since we started hearing them each day? Could it be coming from a daimyo's residence? I've heard they have a drum in their fire watchtower instead of wooden clackers, but I don't see a fire, so why are they sending the drum? Then one morning, a body was found. Isn't that old man Kenzo, the ukiyo-e painter? He lived nearby, but had been down and out for years despite his best efforts to sell his works. Every now and then, his granddaughter would visit, and he would teach her to paint. It was the old man's only pleasure. One day, his granddaughter told him about her dreams curses souls resurrections hearing her tale the old man was gripped by a sudden zeal and began to paint with great fervor his work quick, quickly became famous enchanting all those who viewed the strange imagery even the daimyo had taken notice what could possibly have happened the people whispered amongst each other it looked almost as if he had been beaten like a drum there once was an infamous mode by the the name of tomezo who fell for home and named okomo oh we already read this Uh, Akoma was a lovely woman. She was spirited, worked hard, and lived a frugal yet pleasant life until her husband hanged himself. My husband, a swindler, who would believe such a thing? Okoma was determined to clear her husband's name. That is when she met Tomezo, a man that was a stranger to these parts. This man must be one of the daimyo spies. It appears that after my husband, I will be next. So be it. But what is he hunting for? Okoma... Putting on the airs of a woman mourning her husband, went to the bridge uh, nightly to seek information from Tomezo. She soon discovered that she was right, and that her husband had been deceived. Okoma decided to bring her newfound knowledge to the daimyo, much to Tomezo's alarm. Angered at having been misled, he confronted her on the bridge. But Okoma would not listen. She cursed him, called him vile names, and eventually his patience had worn thin. Blood splattered everywhere, and by the time he returned to his senses, it was already too late. He looked over the bridge into the river of blood below, uh, below and saw the corpse of a woman both an arm and a leg. Um, do we have the thing? I remember seeing that there was... There it is, okay. So we still don't have the Whispering Canal. June Ariel. I think I'm gonna be late to lunch. Sorry for keeping you out out so late, Mio. I can't take my mind off the curse bearer who was never found. Oh, it's not a problem for me. I usually work at night anyway. Did you see Miss Yako home safely? Yep, we sent her home in a patrol car earlier. Apparently, she put up quite a fuss saying she wanted to see things through to the end. Thank you. The Feast of Shadows was starting to take effect, so it would have been dangerous. 8 p.m. with no one around, this place is silent as the grave. No one wants to go out at night in these parts after everything that's happened over the past two days. Oh. Hmm? What's wrong? Next is Detective Ario. What? Can't get my mind off the remaining curse stone, the Whispering Canal, and who the Mastermind is. But we have to deal with that thing before I can worry about any of that. How's it going with the two talismans? Have you re- uh, figured out the location of the Record of Fate's Yin Scroll? I have, more or less. 
When I combined the contents of the two talismans, they formed a seal which could be undone. The things inside the talismans that looked like scraps of wood were actually a tiny scroll kept folded up by the seal. Who would have thought uh, the talismans were actually contained the scroll? Uh, Who would have thought the talismans actually contained the scroll itself? So that's the end scroll then. What's it say? Well, there's one more seal we have to undo to open the scroll. It's giving me some trouble, so I was actually hoping you could help me out. Okay, unlocking the seal. Got it. Sure thing. I don't know what I'll be able to do, but let me at it. Wow, I didn't expect you to be so eager to help. It's all the reassuring. Okay, let's see. There are five seals holding the scroll shut. I think we have to remove them in the correct order. Each seal has a different design. A carp, a light, a beech leaf, a tycho drum, and a reed. Remove the five seals in the right order. Okay. If we get it wrong, is it going to, you know, go boom? Huh? No, we'll just have to try again. I tested it once already. Oh, you already tried it yourself. So brave. I think it's devised so the seal can only be undone if the curses for the right have already been unleashed. And I think there's a hint to opening it hidden in something related to the curses. Hmm. Just let me know when you're ready. It won't explode or anything, so we might as well give it a try. I see. Okay. Remove the five seals in the correct order. Uh, the carp was probably first. I don't remember the order of events. The beech leaf... What was the Tycho? No, I don't think that was right. Nope, no good. Do you recognize any of the things on these seals? They sort of look familiar. Maybe there'd be something in our files. I see, okay. Uh, files. Curse stones. All right, so I looked up a spoiler-free guide for this. Uh, it gave me the information that I think that we need. So I did not do this myself. This was El Ninmi on the Steam forums. So, uh, where is beach? Evergreen beach. So, uh... So, Jinkichi is the first victim. Um... And then... Maybe not. Is Jinkichi the first named victim of the family? So old man Kanzo is the first paint is the first victim. Jinkichi tells a story of old man, um, old man Kanzo, uh, and then that gets him hung because people think that he's a liar. Um, Akoma, uh, comes after her husband, uh, who, um, Akoma is Jinkichi's wife. Uh, she is seeking, like, revenge or, like, answers for his death, and then she gets killed. Uh, Canal.
Uh, Choki loved fishing with her father, Jinkichi. Um, so she comes after Jinkichi. Uh, and then her mother, Koma, who is a Koma. Uh, one day her father disappeared. Her mother went to look for him and never came back. So this takes place after Jinkichi and Akoma. And then, late. And then this talks about a coma. So it it doesn't give us dates. Um, one of the guides I was looking at said, look for the dates. So there's no dates in these files. Um, so you kind of have to just infer the order. But the, inf the order goes... Uh, the Tycho first. The beach. The... Reed, uh, the canal, and then the light. Wow, you got it right. It's open. It took four tries, but you did it. I just needed some time to get warmed up, that's all. Now we can finally read what's written inside. Let's see. It is said that Simon Tsuchi Mikado, author of The Record of Fates, wrote the end scroll because he feared that the descendants of those involved in the Hanjo incident might become cursed and used in the collection of soul drugs for the Rite of Resurrection. The existence of the end scroll uh, was indicated in a postscript added to The Record of Fates, but its whereabouts are currently unknown. It is believed to have been inherited by a descendant of the Simon. Uh, the text has been preserved in the form of two talismans held by Hajime Yoshimi and Michio Shir Ishii. It contains a full account of the Honjo incident, and the following is written in Simon's hand. I bequeath the scroll to future generations to be used in the event that the calamity should arise from this grievous incident. Those who seek to foresaw disaster might, must gather these three items in one place to cast my rite of cleansing and expel all rituals and curses in full. My soul, that is my curse echo, my body, that is a living continuation of my bloodline, my spirit, that is my own consciousness. During the Edo period, a chain of events that occurred around a certain uh, resurrection spell became the basis for the Seven Mysteries of Honjo. This is a story that takes place in the late Edo period. There was once a family that lived in a row house of Honjo. The family consisted of an Etsuke craftsman named Jinkichi, his wife Koma, and their daughter Toki. They enjoyed a poor but happy existence. One day, they took in a man by the name who claimed to be a Shimoji. He was on the run, having barely escaped with his life from something or other, and wound up in Honjo. The tough circumstances had left him sick and destitute. Jinkichi felt sorry for the man and decided to shelter him. The stranger was deeply grateful for the kindness and the care of Jinkichi's family, as without it he would have surely died, and told them thusly on the day of his departure, I want to give you my thanks, but unfortunately I have nothing of value. He paused and asked, is there anyone you want to bring back to life? It turned out that the man's true name was Tsuchimikado Simon, a descendant of renowned Onmyoji, and he had been researching the fabled right of, resur right of resurrection. For his crime in unearthing this forbidden rite, he was chased out by his family, but he wrote down everything about the spell in a book he named The Record of Fates while on the run. Whoever sought to perform the rite would need to kill the people, uh, would need to kill people and gather their soul dregs. Simon had only researched the rite out of the spirit of inquiry, but thought himself willing to use the rite if it was for the sake of Jinkichi's family. However, Jinkichi shook his head. Sacrificing someone is unthinkable. We didn't help you because we wanted something in return, so you owe us nothing. He said, declining the unbelievable offer. Uh, Simon bowed.
bowed his head in gratitude countless times at those words and left their house. In the same area, there lived an ukiyo-e artist known as Old Man Kanzo. His art didn't sell much, but he often looked after Toki while Jinkichi and Koma were out working. Young Toki heard Simon's talk about the rite of resurrection, but being too young to uh, comprehend it, regaled it to Old Man Kanzo as a story of fiction. Old Man Kanzo, inspired by the story and filled with renewed vigor, put his heart and soul into his next painting. The piece, centered around the theme of resurrection, became an instant hit in town. Jinkichi, being a shrewd businessman, saw an opportunity and jumped on the bandwagon by carving Netsuke connection by carving Netsuke connected to the old man Kanzo's ukiyo-e. He made up stories about his Netsuke, telling the people that their blessings were connected to resurrection, and his business rap rapidly flourished. That man unknowingly left us a wonderful gift, thought Jinkichi and his family, but they were unaware of the tragedy that would soon unfold. Before long, word of old man Kanzo's wonderful ukiyo-e reached the ears of the local daimyo, and he was summoned to the Lord's residence. But what awaited him was not praise, but cruel torture at the hands of Shino, a female on Miyoji who was in pursuit of Simon. It was her who pressured Simon into researching the rite of resurrection, which she secretly planned to use to preserve her beauty for all eternity. Ashino took advantage of the fact that the daimyo's heart was weak and frail following the loss of his family, and manipulated him into capturing Old Man Kanzo, the source of the recent rumors about resurrection. Tell me where you heard the rite of resurrection, Ashino demanded as the brutal beatings continued. It was said that the eerie sound of the beatings rang out like the be beating of a taiko drum night after night, reaching even the watchtower of the Suguru residence. In the end, Ashino's cruel torture secured her the information on Jinkichi's family and the existence of the Record of Fates. The daimyo sent his chief retainer to bring in Jinkichi, and the torture resumed afresh uh, with the new captive. This time, she intended to obtain the whereabouts of Simon, location of the Record of Fates. Jinkichi didn't know where Simon went, but even if he did, uh, he had no intention of telling and stubbornly kept his mouth shut. Mouth shut. The torture was pushed too far, and Jinkichi was unintentionally killed before he spoke a word. The daimyo had Jinkichi's corpse hanged from a beech tree and declared that, unable to bear the guilt of the crime of deceiving the masses with false rumors and resurrection, Jinkichi had committed suicide. This, too, was all part of Ashino's plan to send a message to the common folk, especially the increasing number of those who sought out the right for themselves. News of what happened to Jinkichi spread and people lost interest in the right, wondering if the stories of resurrection were all but a lie. But rumors of the daimyo's word was perhaps not all that truthful spread quickly when a dancer claimed to have witnessed the chief retainer's cold-blooded handiwork firsthand, and Hanjo fell into unrest once more. The chief retainer arrested the girl and proposed a deal to put a stop to the rumors. The girl was to say she just wanted attention and retract her story by saying it was entirely made up. In exchange, she would be given a most wondrous stage to perform on. But when the day came, she was suffocated by the mask prepared for the performance. Unbeknownst to her, the mask had been covered in glue as part of a plan to kill and silence her. Koma never believed for a moment that her husband, Jinkichi, had committed suicide. She was certain someone was behind his death and asked around persistently for the names and addresses and any other information she could find on people with connections to the daimyo. The chief retainer would not allow things to escalate any further, and had Tomezo, a ronin who once served as a spy, go after her. However, she turned the table on him, shouting, It was you who killed my husband, wasn't it? Confronted with the accusation, Tomezo flew into a blind rage and cut Koma down in broad daylight, ordered to take responsibility for his failure by committing Sapu... Sapuku, he exposed the daimyo's plot as he disemboweled himself by the lantern of the soba cart used to give the coded signals. With both her parents gone through means unbeknownst to her, Toki found herself to be all alone. One day, late at night, she went searching for her parents and met a doom, falling into a canal where she drowned. Meanwhile, the chief retainer had made no headway whatsoever in finding Simon's whereabouts. Uh, in an incensed Ashino decided to set fire to his residence, burning him alive. In truth, all those connected to the events thus far were cursed by Shino so that their souls would be would turn into soul drugs upon death, which she had been collecting. All she needed to perform the right now was to get her hands on the record of fates. Sensing that there was something serious at work behind the recent string of uh, strange events in Hanjo, Simon returned to find he was too late. He broke down in tears when he learned of the unfortunate and unnatural deaths of Jinkichi's family had met. Uh, Simon realized it was the handiwork of Shino when he found their soul dregs had been collected and decided he had to prevent any further sacrifices from happening by confronting her on Hanji Bridge. What ensued was a fierce battle of spells that endured till the break of dawn, though those who did not know any better only saw what they believed to be an eerie flashes uh, and supernatural orbs of light. At the end of a long battle, Shino defeated Simon and obtained the record of fates, but he had placed a curse upon her foot. As Shino dragged her foot, corrupted and horribly inflamed, and sought refuge at the nearby residence of her chainer, 
and angrily demanded they wash her foot. Ashino died then and there, filled with agony, and her foot cursed and rotted. Simon too, having sustained serious wounds during the fight, died that day on Honji Bridge, still filled with regret. However, Simon came back to life. Knowing that there would be enough soul drugs in place during the confrontation, he prepared a spell that would activate the right of res resurrection upon his passing. Feeling that his curiosity was responsible for the terrible tragedy that had unfolded, he was left with a keen understanding of why the right of resurrection was forbidden, became determined to seal it away. Indeed, the reason he'd resurrected himself was that for that very purpose. However, he did not know uh, what had become of the record of fates. With nothing to seal away, he, insis he instead used the remaining soul drugs to turn nine of the Natsuke made by Jinkichi into ritual implements to be sealed away in Honjo. He placed a spell so that should someone try to activate the right of resurrection again, all nine pieces will awaken at once. And to pass the whole truth of these events to future generations, he wrote everything down in the record of fates Yin scroll and passed it down to his descendants. Meanwhile, townspeople kept silent about the incidents out of fear of being cursed. However, these occurrences were so strange that gossip about it couldn't truly be contained. Over time, the details became more and more vague as the stories grew into legends, and that is how they came to be called the Seven Mysteries of Honjo. That was a lot. Hmm, I see. What does it say? First is a detailed account of the tragedies surrounding the Rite of Resurrection that occurred in the Hanjo period and the Edo period. Well, the whole story of what we call the Hanjo incident uh, is laid out clearly. That incident was the origin of the seven mysteries of Hanjo and their curses, right? Yes, the resentment of the victims of the incident turned into curses, which are the curse echoes. The contents are organized like an answer sheet, so it doesn't just give us the information we need. Ah, is there anything else? Yes, here's what we've been looking for. I bequeath the scroll to future generations to be used in the event that calamity should arise from this grievous incident, it says. Whoa, he foresaw all this happening? And it continues. Those who seek to foresaw disaster must gather these three items in one place to cast my rite of cleansing and dispel all rituals and curses in full. My soul, that is my curse echo, my body, that is a living continuation, continuation of my bloodline, my mind, that is my own consciousness. Wow, so if we gather these three things in one place, Simon's Rite of Cleansing will activate and completely negate the curses in the Rite of Resurrection. Ooh, that's it. That's exactly what we need. The three things that are Simon's soul, body, and mind. It says the soul is Simon's curse echo. His curse echo, so Simon himself is part of the Seven Mysteries. Now that you mentioned it, Mr. Arishi said something along those lines before. There's another hint written here. My curse echo holds my curse. My curse brings ruin to curse bearers. What kind of hint is that? Maybe it'll make more sense as, as we keep looking. But will the curse echo still appear if the curse bearer is already gone? Next, the body is, is a descendant of Simon's, it seems. Wasn't Yoshimi a relative of Simon? He and Michio Shir Ishii, who had the other talisman. Ah, both of them had already passed by the time the iteration of the curses was unleashed. Damn, that's true. What are we going to do? His bloodline was so split up, there have to be others. Oh, there's another note here, too. Where? Is it another hint? As for the body, seek not only one who bears my blood, but one with strong spirit sense. Such an individual will be able to will be able if a spirit attempts to possess them to instead take control of that spirit themselves. So it says. Do we know of anyone like that? I can't think of anyone. Let's move on for now. Next is the mind. What's the difference between the mind and the soul? Um, in paranormal theory, it's said that humans are made up of soul, body, and mind. The mind is essentially thought to be part of the spirit that makes up one's consciousness, oneself. It's like driving. The body is the car, the soul is the control system, and the mind is the driver. Hmm, I see. I think that makes sense. So, is there a hint of finding this one, too? Well, let's see. There's this. Should the right of resurrection be activated elsewhere, so too shall my mind be awakened there. Simon tried to seal away the right of resurrection, but before he could, Ashino stole the record of fates. So, as a countermeasure to the right being activated, he made it so that his mind would be released from the seal. Okay, but what does that actually mean? What it means is... Simon's mind awoke the night the right was activated and must be possessing someone out there right now. What? So we have to get that person together with everything else. All right, so we have to find the curse echo, the descendant, and the person who possessed Simon. Then we just get them together in a place and we'll be good to go. Right, but there's one thing. The second and third ones could both be the same person. Oh? But who could that be? If it's like how Michio lost her memories when she was possessing Yako, Simon's consciousness might, be not, might not be aware of who it really is. If he learned the truth, would he start to act of his own accord? Oh, then that person could already be... Oh, hold on a second. Someone's coming this way. Huh? Excuse me. Could I interrupt you for just a moment? Um, who might you be? Would you buy this empty can of juice I just finished drinking for 10,000 yen? Huh? 
I'll even throw in these bones from some fried chicken. You can't beat a deal like this. Um, I, uh, I don't really want them. Don't say that. Come on, they're delicious. Actually, I thought I, I thought I might just have a picnic right here. Won't you join me? Sorry, um, I don't understand. What should we do? Well, it's not like we need this exact spot. We can't just do anything with other people around. Let's just move somewhere else. Um, sorry, we're in the middle of something, so we'll just be on our way. What? Urgh. Ah, uh, it hurts. Ah, this is a curse. I knew it. I called it. I called it two episodes ago. Two videos ago. You have my heartfelt thanks for all your hard work thus far. Thus, uh, this brings the story of the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo to a close. And who could have foreseen such a conclusion? Unfortunately, it seems the so-called mastermind was one step ahead of you. She remains hidden, leaving behind no evidence. Perhaps there is truly no way to stop her. I didn't know that she was the mastermind. However, should you find that this conclusion is not to your liking, by all means, please pursue a different path. You have done it once before, so I am sure you already know how. With that, I shall be taking my leave. I have been your humble storyteller. Good night. Uh, Ario's choice reached the Tetsuo Sutsumi ending. Uh, so it, it hinted that Shogo was number two and three because he's strong against magical forces. Where do we need to go? There you are. Huh. The hell is that? Looks like a light floating in midair. Huh? Okay. Whoa, it's coming closer. Is this another one of the seven mysteries? Looks like a will o wisp maybe. Was there anything like that in the Seven Mysteries? Huh? Am I supposed to touch it? Cleansing. When the body, soul, and mind of Simon, Suchi, Mikado have all been brought together, the rite of cleansing is activated, spelling all rituals and curses that have been previously performed. My, my. Finally, you have arrived at this juncture. I expected no less from you. That would mean that you have managed to bring everything to light. Though there is the possibility that you have wound up here by chance. So before I take you any further, I must ask you a number of questions. About what exactly the soul, body, and mind of Simon Tsuchi Mikado are. Firstly, which curse echo represents the soul of Simon uh, Tsuchi Mikado? Beckoning light. Yes, that is exactly it. After his defeat at the hands of Ashino in the Hanjo incident, Simon wandered about near Honji. The form of his curse echo changed over time with the legend he left behind. This is the curse echo which was acquired by Mayu, Ch Mayu Chozawa. But when called forth by Simon's body and mind, it appeared momentarily before him. Let us continue. Who served as the self of Simon Tsuchi Mikado? Who was his body, his descendant, who carried his blood in their veins? Is it Shogo or is it me? Yes. Correct again. Although Shogo Okie was born to an ordinary family, the blood of a distant relative ran thick in his veins. In truth, the same is true for Yoko Fukunaga. She was also one who had the blood of a distant relative coursing through her. In her case, it was Ashino. Simon and Ashino fated to meet again all these hundreds of years later. Now for my final question. Who is the mind of Simon Tsuchi Mikado? Tell me the name of the person whose consciousness was directly tied to this. Uh, 
Oh, oh, I see. You believe it to be Om Wright's. Are you saying you believe it to be yourself? Are you certain? Yes, you are correct. Finally, you have remembered. That's right, you are. Simon's consciousness awoken by the curses and the rite of resurrection. However, having lost your memories, you forgot about the duty assigned to you. That this is, if I may say so, where I played my part, guiding you through the events of the story. As your consciousness was all that was left of you, you manipulated time and space by way of the story chart, jumping from vessel to vessel, and manipulated your host's actions by whispering commands into their ears. In doing so, you were able to get the full picture of what needed to be done. But, at one point, while still unconscious, you managed to remember your duty. The so-called mastermind behind these events, the one who awakened the right and the curses, was Yoko Fukunaga, descendant of Ashino herself. You unconsciously activated your curse and killed her. How interesting that she awakened Simon's consciousness at the same time as the curses. That was the one and only time she could have been stopped. Ah, but, due to your influence on Shogo Okie's will, Yoko Fukunaga was brought back to life. Using the story chart to undo her death, I led you to believe that it was the work of the Rite of Resurrection itself. But as it turns out, seeing what would transpire if the Mastermind was not killed at the outset is what ultimately revealed the way to put an end to the curses for good. There were certain things which would have answered all your questions had you noticed them. For example, even while under your control, Shogo Okie willingly used his curse. I noticed that. When I asked you early on how many Shogo Okie had killed, this is what I meant. Had you not used the curse, Shogo Okie would have done so of his own accord. Furthermore, Mayu, Mayu Chozawa was able to recall information which only you knew. She was able to do this because she was connected to you through her curse echo, the beckoning light. In truth, Yoko is a descendant of the Anmyoji who continues... In truth, Yoko is a descendant of Anmyoji who continue to practice in modern times. Her ancestors, Ashino, attempted to steal the Rite of Resurrection in Hanjo during the Edo period. Born with exceptional spirit sense, Yoko learned about her own ancestry while researching her roots, and was disappointed to find her bloodline had fallen into mediocrity. She became consumed with her ambition to restore her family's lost glory through her own powers, and devised a scheme to succeed where Shino failed to perform the Rite of Resurrection. Yoko continued her training, developing her spiritual and course curse powers until she discovered the Record of Fates, which offered clues regarding the Rite. She plotted to use the curses of the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo to gather the large number of soul drugs by calling forth curse, curse echoes and setting the stage for mutual slaughter. The ultimate plan involved invoking a large-scale feast of shadows, awakening the curses, performing the rite herself, and bringing together enough soul drugs to revive Ashino. Since the effects of the curses increase the more people know and fear them, she first entrusted the record of fates to local historian Hideki Araishi, who could be used to... Uh, to easily spread the rumors. She also contacted uh, Fumichika Nejima, a criminal with a deep understanding of mystic arts, to obtain the cursed stones needed to gather soul drugs. Unsurprisingly, Nejima was very interested in the story of Ashino and readily agreed to, his, uh, to aid his revival. While carrying the, out these steps, Yo, uh, Yuko learned of the existence of the Yin Scroll, which threatened to thwart her plans. She added a note about the scroll in the Record of Fates before giving it to Araishi, intending to acquire it before it could pose an issue. Through her investigations, Yoko discovered that Hajime Yoshimi was a descendant of Simon and threatened him with a curse in an effort to scare him into revealing the whereabouts of the Yin Scroll. While Hajime bravely resisted Yoko's threats, she killed him with the curse to ensure Simon's descendant would not stand in her way. As her preparations were coming together, Yoko obtained the seemingly less dangerous curse stone of the Whispering Canal in order to become a curse bearer, a necessity for gathering the curse stones for the Feast of Shadows. Shogo Okie, also a descendant of Simon, was eyed as a potential risk factor and contacted to ensure he would be lo located nearby and subject to uh, monitoring. Uh, however, unaware that the spirit of Simon would be awakened within Shogo as soon as she invoked the curse, Yoko's plan was thwarted when she was immediately cursed to death by Simon. Now, allow me to ask you one last question. If you, knowing all that you know now, had the ability to resurrect one life, what would you do? I wouldn't want it. I would destroy it. Oh, I see. I see. That was Simon's original intention. I apologize for leaving it out of options when I first asked you this question. Now, it is time to bring things to a close.
Upon your arrival here, the rite of cleansing was activated, dispelling all other rituals and curses. Look upon the fruit of your efforts, and then we shall leave this world behind for good. Thank you, truly, for all the work you have done. Ah! Ah, that's what happened. I can't believe it. I finally understand. Yeah, I was the one who did that to Yoko. The blood of the Onmyoji that's inside me broke into my consciousness and gave me that curse. Yoko was after the Rite of Resurrection. She was the one who awakened the curses of the Seven Myster Mysteries and cast the Feast of Shadows. And the only way to, put, to stop all of it was to put a stop to her here. Otherwise, the Rite of Cleansing might have been negated too. I wonder how much of it was really her doing all those things. Yoko. I guess that explains why I felt like it was fate when all this started. Though she didn't seem to notice. I guess things were always destined to end like this from the moment we met. I wish we could have met under different circumstances. No, no point in thinking like that now. God, I need a drink. I'm thinking a, mas a Moscow mule, or two, or three. Ma'am, what is it? Ah, uh, just a dream. It seems that it was all just a dream. I dreamt that there was such a thing as a rite of resurrection. Just a dream. Sorry to say it, but there isn't. Right, of course not. But... Even if there is no such thing, I promise you that I will get to the bottom of the kidnapping. In fact, I've happened to find a very important lead from over a year ago. Something that's evaded our reach until now. An eyewitness from the scene of the kidnapping. I see. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What the hell is this? The medical unit told me to get down here. What happened? As I was looking into y Yoshimi's death at the former Yasuda Gardens, another body was discovered at a different park in the area. Could they be related? Hmm. Sure looks like it, but... Uh, excuse me. We found this among the victim's belongings. Thought you'd want to know. Hmm. What's this? Well, what the hell? Boss, look what was in the female victim's address book. Yoshimi's phone number and photo. What? And the picture. There's an X drawn on it and a bunch of weird symbols and a hole where his heart would be. No. Do you think, I mean, could this be some kind of curse or something? How many times do I have to tell you not to try to connect everything to the occult? Damn it, is this a Nakagoshi case after all? Hmm? What was that, boss? Ah, don't worry about it. Make sure you put that photo into evidence. There's no doubt this is related to Yoshimi. Make sure you do a thorough sweep of the area. I'm going to make a phone call. Got it. Leave it to me. Spend as long as you want on the phone. Mio, it turns out Michio really did die in an accident. Yeah. If we ask around, we might be able to get a little more information. I guess there never really was such a thing as a rite of resurrection. But I did feel like there was a spirit watching over us. Damn it. Why? Nothing's happening. But now my contract won't be. No. Should never have believed in this blasted record of fates. To all of you watching from far, far away. The rite of resurrection has never existed. Not in any world. Not in any time. So I ask you to take the life you hold and move boldly forward one step at a time. Richter, EY's out. Do you want to question him? 
Hang on, Ariel. I want to get enough evidence for a search warrant. Let him go for now, and I'll follow him. That's the kidnapper? Mm, yes, I'm the one who did it. So please, help me. She's She's always following me. I'm so sorry, Michio. I had no idea. What? Hajime was killed? But they, by this? Yoko Fukunaga? How can that be? He wasn't the kind of guy who could just be picked off like that. You know that. Yeah, and the boss is hiding something. Hmm, there seems to be some kind of secret hidden in Hajime's family tree. Let me see if I can work it. Uh, let me see if I can find out what it is. I had heard you would be absent today. Is there something you need? Well, I seem to have the spirit sense thing all of a sudden. I know it's the sort of thing our chairwoman doesn't approve of, so I thought I'd mention it. Could have called. Didn't think you were the standoffish type. I had to ha find out from EY. Whoops, sorry. I forgot all about my favorite chief inspector. The hell are you planning? Nothing so heinous as you're thinking. I'm only Makoto Ashimaya, after all. Nothing but a lowly janitor. How are things with you? You getting along with your daughter? Well, you know, more or less. Uh, obligation fulfilled. Reach Shogo Okie's ending. Case closed. Complete the story. Alright, let's get out of here. Oh. Are there any achievements I didn't get yet? Uh, there are nine achievements I have not received. Uh, one of them is just the acquire all other achievements, though. So eight. All right. Camera scene. Where are you? There you are. All right. So that was Paranormal Sites, The Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. Um, I enjoyed it a lot. It was very long. It was a lot of reading. Um I felt like there were some points where you unlocked information in the files and it would pop up uh, before the story beat was over. Uh, so one thing that I would recommend is like moving the files unlocked uh, pop up after the story beat is over. You want to get that story in there, make sure that the, the player is like feeling their feelings, they're getting the information, all that stuff. And then do files updated um i had my suspicions of yoko a few episodes ago um because uh of how disconnected the um the prologue was from the rest of the story um so i i had a feeling that she would be coming back since uh shogo went through the the whole timeline shift to save her 
Uh, she she was going to come back in some capacity. Um, I thought that she was going to be like working for the bad guys or working with the bad guys or like uh, that she was going to betray somebody in the main cast um, and come out of nowhere and like, uh, uh, hey, I have a cursed stone. Uh, give me all of your cursed stones. I want to bring back Shogo or something like that. That didn't end up happening. She ended up being the mastermind, which I thought was a good twist. Um, I had suspected that Haraway was going to be the mastermind uh, because she's so rich so that she could pay for like our Ishii's research um, or um, EY's, uh, EY's like living expenses. I thought that she was going to be, uh, it was going to turn out that she was funding EY and she was funding our Ishii. Um, and then when Richter found out that um, uh, EY was the, the kidnapper and the killer, uh, that she was going to have to like go through that um, that process of like uh, I did this like I I've, he murdered my son and I've been funding him for all this time um, that didn't end up happening um, I had started to suspect Ayami at one point because uh, uh, of the um, they made a point to say that the Chiefs bloodline is strong against supernatural stuff uh, but then it turned out that she was. Um, uh, what uh, Fumichiko Nejima, uh, Nejima's daughter. Um, I had expected that uh, Mio was going to be Nejima's daughter because she's so tied up in the occult. Uh, they mentioned that she has like a darkness around her. I wonder if, like, an earlier draft, she was Nejima's like daughter. Um, so it, there's a few things where it was like I got taken in by either the red herrings uh, or the um the uh the hints that i was picking up on turned out to be wrong uh which makes it exciting right it wasn't boring it wasn't predictable uh, a lot of the twists um they make sense in character uh but also uh they're surprising um i the, my favorite ending was actually the haraway ending where uh ayame convinces haraway to give up on her her quest to bring her son back um, and then the one where she murders Ayami, those were my two favorite of the endings, uh, because they both like feel very like well-written, uh, in character endings. Um, and so I liked both of those. Um, I am glad that I decided not to murder anybody in the prologue, uh, because that gave us a hint that we needed later on. Um, I feel like I had, uh, I've, I've talked about this in other games before. Um, I really wish that when you clicked on a dialogue option, it would do all of it. Uh, it it's one of, becoming one of my pet peeves where if you click on a dialogue option uh, and it just does like one part of it and it's one part of seven or it's one part of five. Uh, it really is annoying having to go back and click the same dialogue option over and over until you've exhausted it. And I don't know why Like it seems to be happening in a lot of these games. Just give us the entire dialogue. Um, when we click on the option, go through the entire dialogue. If you want to add more onto it later, uh, add another dialogue option. So about the Cursed Stones. Everything about the Cursed Stones. But wait, didn't you say this about your Cursed Stone? That's a follow-up. That's a different dialogue option. You're not going back to about the curse stone seven time to get all the information about the curse stones. I don't understand why that that's like becoming such a big thing in these games where you have to click on the same thing over and over and again to get all the information. Um, just give us all the information up front. It's really not that hard. Uh, I think that that is all I need to go. I am late for lunch. Um, I love you guys. Thank you for joining me for another night of strange and scary games. I'll see you in the next video. Good night.